what better way to bring in 2017 with, than with some Division I men's college basketball here on the CW between the GCU Lopes and the Utah Valley Wolverines. That's right, they're back and they are returning some superstars to action tonight. I'm Kate Longworth, welcome you inside GCU Arena for the Lopes WAC season opener. Now, this is what the guys have been preparing for all season long. And after battling injuries in 2016, well, you better believe the 2017 New Year's resolution is to stay healthy. And with guys like the mayor, Josh Braun, and Darian Clark suited up, ready for tip-off tonight, well, let's just say that is welcoming news for this Lopes squad. I mean, we've obviously just been missing bodies. I think that's a, a big thing. We've had a lot of guys, or a few guys playing a lot of minutes. And so uh, that'll be good to kind of be able to come in and give them a break. I mean, they've been playing awesome, playing great. And, um, you know, we've got an awesome team playing some, some good basketball. And so they're all capable. I just think we need, to, we need to step in and give them a break every once in a while. I think that's the big thing. It's a huge, huge. Um, we got Josh, another scorer, shooter, who, who takes a lot of scoring pressure off Dwayne. And other rebounder and, and uh, Darian defender, so it's we got a lot, we got inside and outside back, so it, it makes it a lot easier on everybody. Well, this is what the Lopes were hoping for. They've been preparing all season long for this whack opener, and they wanted a healthy squad tonight. They get Josh Braun and Darian Clark back, hoping they're at full strength. Only time will tell as the game plays out. And speaking of that, we will go to the guys who will be calling all the action tonight. Let's welcome in Barry Butel and Scott Williams. Guys, we've had fun with this preseason, but I know at the heart of it, we've been waiting for WAC play, and it's here. That's uh, exactly correct. Yeah, everything gets ramped up for conference play, doesn't it? A little, little tighter, a little uh, more intensity. Yeah, this GCU team has been you know, kind of knocking on that door, trying to get that WAC championship, so it will be nice to see how they perform tonight. Well, it's early on, but the uh, WAC standings early on. New Mexico State playing really well under head coach Paul Weir in his first year there with the Aggies. They're off to a 2-0 start, a big win against Chicago State. They're 15-2 overall. Yeah, they're playing some really good basketball, and Chicago State really struggling out, out of the gates in the whack play once again this year. But, you know, that's what GCU's chose at New Mexico State, so they need a win right now. Last game, well, uh, this one you kind of just, uh, well, you just kind of throw it off. 76-56, double-double for Keontae Vernon in the game, 14 points and 11 boards. Yeah, he, he was good in that gas well game. Unfortunately, he didn't have any help. Russell Frere, Martin, just 6 of 36 from the field. Tired legs, maybe a lackadaisical attitude. attitude. Uh, look past the Highlanders, uh, you know, looking forward to this game against Utah Valley University. Wow, what a homecoming it will be. Back in the lineup for Josh Braun and Gary and Clark. Josh missing nine games. The team did play 6-3 and three overall, but, boy, they need him on the court. Yeah, they, they just need his smartness and toughness around the basket, ability to be able to create his own shot, but also make other players on the floor better. I think he does so many things well uh, that he's going to be stepped right into this starting lineup tonight seamlessly for Coach Marley. And look for him to be aggressive early on. I know maybe he might be, you know, the thought would be for him to be apprehensive and just try to fit in, but I think he needs to be the preseason player of the year that people predicted that he would be prior to the injury. Might be a lot to ask, but boy, does he love playing against the Wolverines. Average 32 points per game in the two games against Utah Valley a year ago. You saw the also the six rebounds. Darian Clark, well, they're looking for him to continue on that seven rebound per game pace. For Darian Clark, he comes back from the shoulder injury. Yeah, you need this guy because, you know, Kerwin Smith's done a nice job, but you need that sandpaper, that toughness, that rebounding. He's got that shoulder ram that kind of went up and back against him. So you have to pay attention to how well he's able to rebound. He has to get those positions where he's battling guys up above his head. His shoulder really took a, took a beating right there. But if I know Darian Clark, he's ready to provide a lift to this basketball club. He knows this is his senior year, and he wants to go out with a bang. Utah Valley Wolverines, second year head coach Mark Pope. They are eight and seven overall, a team that has a lot of newcomers. And Mark Pope went after some transfers. Their lineup is littered with them from BYU, Utah, and Xavier. This is a team that's going to be playing real hard. They want to be one of the leaders in points scored in all of the NCAA. Yeah, they've been really revving it up. We talked to Coach Pope before the basketball game. He says New Year's resolutions to score 100 points a game. So look for them to jack it up early and often. They will 
shoot the three. They were shooting about 30 threes, 30 to 35 threes a game. They dialed back that number a little bit. But they're trying to get out in transition, use their wheels to create easy field goal opportunities. Well, they're led by a 6'11 forward by the name of Isaac Nielsen. He is a transfer from BYU. Yeah, he is a beast on the boards. 25th in the offensive rebounds in the nation, 23rd in the nation overall. Nearly a double double machine, 12.6 points per game, 9.5 rebounds per game. He shoots 60 percent. Oh, and the big fella can also go out behind the arc and stroke it from behind the arc. He's shooting 44 percent behind the arc. This guy's lethal from underneath the boards and then out at the arc as well. So we'll keep an eye on Mr. Nielsen throughout the course of the game. Kate, we'll send it back over to you. All right, guys. Well, I know we were all happy to show up tonight's game and see it shoot around. Braun Clark ready to go. We knew this was the target date, but now it seems real. However, Scott, I got to imagine as a player, there's one thing to have your rehab under control and to feel good. But I imagine there's a difference between rehab going well and feeling basketball ready. Yeah, it's really hard to create the basketball movements on a treadmill or elliptical machine or even running in place or jogging in a pool, it'll be interesting to see how he'll be able to backpedal uh, side, to, side to side, jumping, rebounding, those types of things. People will sprint from a dead stop. You got guys hanging on you. It's a different type of motion, but if I know one thing, Josh Paul will be ready to go tonight. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and I know the Lopes happy to have their leader back on the court. That is right, the mayor, he is back, as is Darian Clark. Ron had been battling a bum knee. Clark, that shoulder, we'll see how it all holds up in the game. And we know for one thing, Dan Marley's New Year's resolution for this team, stay healthy. What else is in the game plan? Well, Barry finds out right after this when we come back with more Lopes pregame show here on The CW. We'll see you in a moment. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Be sure to tune into the Dan Marley Show for an up-close look at the GCU men's basketball team, recaps of recent games, and we'll hear detailed game analysis from head coach Dan Marley. Stay tuned for upcoming shows on the 21st of January, February 4th, and the 25th, and final season recap show. That's the Dan Marley Show on the CW6. The Lopes pregame show continuing from GCU Arena as the Lopes begin conference play. We are now joined by the head coach of Grand Canyon University, one Dan Marley. Happy New Year to you, and uh, is this team ready to go to tip off conference play? Well, I hope so. This is what we've been waiting for all year long. Uh, we've worked hard. We had a good week of practice. We have uh, Darian had a good week of practice. He's back. Uh, Josh is back. Uh, he's not 100%, but I'm not sure if he'll ever be 100%. So mm -hmm. we'll just have to see how those two guys go. But it's nice to have... Uh, uh, two of our main players back uh, in uniform. Will one or both be in the lineup, starting lineup? Uh, Josh will start. Okay. Um, Darian will get uh, significant time coming off the bench. Um, he had a really good uh, week of practice, so I'm expecting him to come in and play well and give us a lot of energy. What were your thoughts? I know it didn't finish the way that you wanted it to at UC Riverside, but the non-conference schedule leading up, you are now 9-6. and six, And without Josh in the lineup in those nine games, you were 6-3 and three and 4-1 and and in the five that Darian missed. Yeah, we did okay. It was disappointing here at, uh, when we lost to SIUE. Uh, yeah. That's a game that got away from us. That's the, the day uh, that Josh got hurt, played 10 minutes, kind of limped, uh, limped around, kind of threw us off a little bit, and then uh, really played well here against Louisville. Went to U of A, played well there, and had some good wins at home. So uh, it was very disappointing going to Riverside and playing that poorly. Um, you always want to play well on the road, and especially uh, your last game going into the conference season. So uh, we've kind of let that go, and hopefully we'll come out tonight with a lot of energy. Um, 
we know how important it is to get out and 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 ex win, especially here at home mm -hmm. uh, in the WAC. It's going to be every game is going to be a grind out game. It's extremely hard to win on the road, so we have to take care of uh, home business that we did pretty well last year. We only won uh, lost one game here at home, so uh, this will be a big matchup for us. Well, in the absence of Josh and Darian, you had a guy like Kerwin Smith uh, show some some flashes of, of really good play on the court. Yeah, as uh, Kerwin played well at Riverside, he's going to start tonight. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, we're going to go bigger. Uh, Kerwin will be at the five, Keontae at the four. So Kerwin just got to go out there and not try to do uh, anything he's not supposed to, just protect the rim, catch the ball, finish, uh, be a force in there for us in the inside, uh, score when he has the ability. He's really gotten better in, in the block, uh, using his little jump hooks and things like that. So just come out and play uh, you know, hard when he's in there. And then we'll have Darian come in and play also. And you may see Conte at the five and, and Jared at the four. So we have three big men that we can rotate in and out. Dwayne Russell's been the story all season long, obviously. 24.2 uh, points per game and at 38 minutes averaging on the court every game. Is a guy like Josh going to be a nice added addition back on the court to help a guy out like Well, that? we hope so. We don't have a whole lot of guys to score when yeah. uh, when Josh isn't in there. And Dwayne, uh, you know, draws all the defensive attention. And, uh, he's had some incredible games that, you know, at Riverside he just couldn't get it going, couldn't make shots he usually makes. But it's really hard for him to just, uh, when people are looking at him, to score all the time. And now that they'll have somebody out there that they have to look at, uh, we can play, run some a lot of plays for Josh and, and have Dwayne out there uh, facilitating a little bit more, but also looking for a shot. And Dwayne's still going to have to uh, score some points for us, obviously, to win games. But, uh, you know, we're going to have to see how Josh is doing. Uh, he didn't have a great week of practice. He's coming back from his 18th knee surgery. So he's just going to be out there and, and play as hard as he can as he always does, and hopefully it'll be okay. Yeah, there's nothing like game shape, is there, for guys Well, it's back not even so much. It, it, you know, Josh has done a good job. He's, he's in pretty good shape. He's lost a lot of weight. Um, it's just whether his knee's going to hold up right. or not, if he can move. Uh, he's going to have to play defense and rebound and do all the other things. He just can't stand out there and shoot. He's going to have to be a, a, a guy that's going to rebound and play defense for us also. So we'll be watching that closely and see how he does. Well, you hope he plays well because you've got a Utah Valley team coming in despite 8-7 and seven record. This is a team that uh, Mark Pope has got a lot of new faces, a lot yeah. of new faces and a few transfers that are making some impact. Yeah, really good transfer guys, guys mm -hmm. who know how to play uh, – all their guys can really shoot. Uh, I think they're eighth in the nation in pace of play. They like to get up and down, which is fine with us. That's how we like to play. Um, they'll push it on makes and misses. They spread the floor. Uh, they got a big kid in there, 6'11", uh, really a big kid who can rebound, averages over three offensive rebounds a game, and also can step out and shoot threes. And the other guys can really spread the floor and, and really put it on you. If, you, if you're not guarding, they, they average over 23s a game. I think it was like 28 a game. Right. So they're going to let that thing go, and uh, we're going to have to be on our toes defensively and, and do a good job guarding the basketball. That's definitely something that Coach Pope has talked about. He, he wants perhaps the highest scoring team in the nation, and they're averaging just a tick over 80 points per game. Yeah, and, you know, that's the way we like to play also. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the firepower right now to do that. So this should be a fun game to watch. Yep. Uh, both teams like to get up and down. We're going to push it. Uh, but this will be a good test for us. This is a team that's really improved. Uh, a lot like the West of the uh, the WAC season and the uh, WAC play, uh, uh, other teams, they've mm -hmm. all improved. So, as I said, every game is going to be tough, and you have to win your home games if you want to be competitive. All right, Coach, good luck tonight. All right, thank you. My thanks to head coach Dan Marley. Uh, as he joins us here on our pregame show, which will continue after we take this time out after a school best 17-12 record a year ago with wins over three top 15 teams, head coach Matt Worley is looking forward to another stellar season. We'll preview the men's volleyball team when we come back. Stay with us on the GCU pregame show here on CW6. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things that can't necessarily be taught. And so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you change my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to the 
Lopes pregame show here on the CW, where we are counting you down to tip off as the Lopes open their WAC season with the Utah Valley Wolverines in town tonight. I'm Kate Longworth, welcoming you inside GCU Arena, where in just a few moments, right behind us, the action will begin. We'll be talking plenty men's basketball tonight. But first, let's turn the page a bit and talk a little GCU men's volleyball. Head coach Matt Rurley, very excited for the upcoming season. After all, the team is coming off a season-high 17 wins last year. Now Rurley ready to go. He thinks the team is ready to go. They've got some tough competition, but videographer Scott McDonald has this preview of what's in store. We've really proven ourselves this year, both in the classroom and on the court. There's been a lot more structure to what we're doing, and the guys have really bought into it. So every day they know what they're getting themselves into. You know, we have very, very quick chalk talk sessions, and then we're out on the court. And then we'll come back to the board, talk about some things. But just the way that the coaches are being so vocal, and there's just always positive feedback in the gym, it just creates this environment that is, you know, really leading to some success. And we've done a lot of small group work uh, just so it's a lot of personal contact with you know players to coaches but also players to players just to get on the same page and actually the culture the culture in the gym is stronger than it's ever been the guys have really bought in and wanted to stick around even through Christmas just to be here and just to put the time in to you know prep for what's ahead this is a huge game of momentum and as soon as you start dwelling on what's happened in the past typically your mind will immediately lead to something negative in the future too. So we're looking on, you know, moving forward so they can really kind of reset their mind and just focus on, you know, what's next as opposed to something that happened in the past. We're using a keyword and you've heard me say it probably a couple times, it's dedicated. Dedicated on the court, dedicated to each other, dedicated to this program, dedicated in the classroom. Whatever we do, we are going to be dedicated. Moving into this season, we, we hit the court, you know, on the road two weekends in a row against some tough teams and you know, if we're dedicated to, you know, what's at hand at that given time, we'll be just fine. We have a new strength coach that's working with the guys and also a new athletic trainer. So really top to bottom, you know, this is a whole new program. And we want to say we're working from the ground up. There has been something pre-established, which we're building off of. But the two new coaches, Troy, Troy brings something. He was a high school teacher. He taught special ed and he brings a different scope to the game. He also coached high school. He has a couple state championships under his belt. He's had some really good things on the coaching side. AJ Nally has played a lot. He's played five years pro. He's been in the USA pipeline and he brings, you know, the playing background to things. So we actually, we balance each other really, really well. Being that we have 10 new guys on our roster of the 22, we're balancing some GCU experience with some experience outside of the GCU program. And, you know, we're, we're expecting a lot out of these guys. I don't think we have a whole lot of respect right now across the country, so we have something to prove. You know, we open up at UCI, and I believe they're currently preseason ranked number eight on the road at UCSD the same weekend, and then head to Hawaii, and Hawaii is ranked, you know, preseason seven. So it's gonna be really tough, and then diving deeper into our conference, you know, Lewis is six, Ohio State reigning national champions, Loyola Chicago I think is 11. We have, we have a really, really tough schedule this year, and you know, I think we're ready. I really do think we're ready. The team did fall last night to number eight UC Irvine, but they put up a fight, losing in three sets. And they continue their California trek tonight in action in La Jolla, facing UC San Diego. And the one they've got circled on the calendar is an in-conference opponent, but it's a big one. Re defending national champion Ohio State on February 24th and February 26th. Well, as I promised, we'll be talking plenty of men's basketball tonight as we count you down to tip off in the Lopes WAC opener tonight here at GCU Arena. We're getting you ready to go here on the Lopes pregame show. And when we come back, special guest Jamie Boggs checks in with us. She is the deputy director of athletics and has all the updates when it comes to new facilities around campus. Stay tuned. You'll want to hear the latest. I'm Taylor, and I'm getting my Bachelor's of Science degree in Marketing from GCU. Moving on campus was one of the best decisions ever. Once I moved on campus, what really made me feel like I was a GCU student was going to all of the events and getting plugged into all the different things that we have going on here. 
One of the things that makes me feel most safe on campus is just the whole community aspect. Like we're a big family here and just knowing that I'm welcome with open arms and I can just be myself. Being an RA has given me a lot of experience that I think I can carry on through the rest of my life. Between my academic scholarship, my RA scholarship, I've got a lot of school paid for already. And what's been nice is that as I've been working throughout school, I've been paying back my loan each summer. The day I graduate, it'll feel awesome because I'll be graduating in three years and I'll have little to no debt. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back inside GCU Arena. We're getting you ready for men's college basketball tonight on the CW. And as you're watching and following along at home, be a part of our broadcast. Find us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Lopes Rising. As you can see right now, tweets are scrolling at the bottom of the screen. And who knows, that could be your tweet. We want you to be a part of the action. So jump on in there throughout the night. I'm Kate Longworth. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. And I'm joined now by a very special guest, Jamie Boggs, who is the GCU Deputy Athletics Director. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And this is exciting. It's the WAC season opener tonight for the Lopes. But this is the final step in transitioning to the Division I program for the men's basketball team. I'm guessing you're feeling excited, relieved, maybe a little bit of both. I'm really excited, um, especially for the university. Uh, transitioning to Vision One isn't just about the athletics program, it's a transition for the entire university. Um, and just the national exposure that we get from being Division One, you can't really put a price tag on. Uh, so to be able to showcase not just our athletics program, uh, but also to tell the story of GCU, that's a great opportunity that I'm really excited about. Does it change your duties at all, making this transition? Um, I don't think my duties will really ever change here because I think this university is always in transition. Uh, we're really considered a, a, a culture of continuous improvement here. Um, and so even though the actual transition will be over, we'll never stop trying to get better. And you guys already stay in laying that foundation, getting that national recognition, especially in basketball this year. But you talk about that transition and you guys have a great initiative going, the 10 in 2, 10 sports facilities to be completed within two years. Where are you guys at with that right now? Well, you know, the facilities, uh, the casual athletics is always the facilities race. And fortunately, we have some of the best facilities in, in the country, thank you to the support of our university and our university president. Um, so we already have great facilities with our amazing soccer stadium. It's probably one of the best in the country. Um, and also what we have uh, coming forward. Uh, but I think what's great about the facilities that we have is what it does for the, uh, for the university, for our fans, our community, um, and for really our students. Um, we already have an amazing game day experience because of our band, our cheerleaders, our student havocs. But then you throw in uh, the bells and whistles of a brand new stadium and brand new facilities, and it's really going to be great uh, for our university. We are just looking at some video. I know yesterday you were at the basketball faci practice facility, checking that out. Softball stadium, brand new. Sand volleyball courts, brand new. Just touch on some of the things that you guys have completed so far and what's on the horizon. Well, we're just completing a phase one of our softball stadium, and that just involves moving the field about 100 feet uh, northeast. Uh, but we'll have brand new sunken dugouts, uh, brand new bullpens, uh, brand new batting cages for our student athletes. That'll be great. Uh, once that's over, once the season's over, we'll start phase two. And phase two involves construction of the actual stadium. So it'll be a 1,200 seat stadium, and I can promise it'll be one of the nicest softball owned stadiums in the country. And I think you touched on it too. Obviously, it means so much for the athletic department and luring athletes here, athletes proud to play there. Play there. But then, what is it like to, you kind of touched on it, for the community? to have something like this. And for the rest of the student body, you see the spirit. We felt it at those soccer games. You see it inside this arena. Again, we have one of uh, the, the best um, game day experiences in the country because of our fans and our students. And um, when you have uh, just the kind of excitement of a new facility, it just makes a lot of curiosity, a lot more excitement. It's gonna make everyone wanna come. Um, I think the other thing is we'll have a lot more seating capacity. So people can bring their family, people can bring their friends and really just bring everyone to experience uh, what we're nationally recognized for in our game day experience. All right, well, thank you so much, Jamie, bringing us great news about what's in store here for the athletic department and the community surrounding the GCU. And still to come, we are counting you down to tip off. This is the WAC season opener for the Lopes. So we're gonna check in on the rest of the competition to see how things are shaping up. Who will be the Lopes main competition this season? We'll tell you right after this.
There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. I am Laura Lozoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. The Purple pregame party underway. Cheer and dance out on the court. They will be performing their national routines here at halftime. And the Havocs are back in the house. All of this for the Lopes as they open the WAC season play tonight with Utah Valley Wolverines in town. So tonight opens at conference play. This is what they've been waiting for all season long. And here on the Lopes pregame show, I'm Kate Long. We're talking you through what it looks like around the conference. The people with the target on their back, deservedly so, is New Mexico State. Chalking up another victory tonight, 77-64, the final over UMKC. Meanwhile, UTRGV hands Chicago State its second loss in conference action, 83-64. The final there. So also, some games going on tonight we'll be keeping our eye on as we look at uh, Seattle University and CSU Bakersfield in action. And of course, you know GCU coaching Utah Valley tonight. We'll see how everything plays out for this men's basketball team because we know a lot is in store for the team ahead, especially when you look at the Lopes next game. After they open up their conference action, Tonight against Utah Valley, well, let's just say it doesn't get any easier. Come the 12th on Thursday, they go up against New Mexico State. You'll remember last year, the victory over New Mexico State here at GCU Arena, one of the biggest in this program's highlights. However, this year, the Aggies are just the tough team to beat in the conference. We'll see how that plays out. Then they hit the road again to go to UTRGV on the 14th. But circle the 17th. If you don't have your tickets, you can get them now. They return here to play San Diego Christian and then return to conference action on the 21st against Seattle University. All right, well, I think we've set the stage. You can feel the excitement in the house. Preseason, that's been all fun and games, but now this is what Dan Marley has coached his team to be ready for. This is how they will find out how they measure up against the competition. Now, the Lopes, they're not eligible yet for that tournament play come March, so their goal this season is to take the WAC Conference, and it all starts tonight right here on the CW as the Lopes Go up against Utah Valley Wolverines, and we are with you every step of the way. Barry and Scott coming back at you with the call. Sit tight, get those stacks ready, because we're ready to go here with some men's Division I college basketball.
college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice, I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. We have to start establishing that this is our place. From here on out. Hey, this is what we played before. We're better safe than them. Let's go. Go get it now, go! Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes tip off the start of conference play against the Wolverines from Utah Valley. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Gary Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, this is it, the start of conference play, and what better time for Josh Braun and Darian Clark to come back because it is going to get heated in the WAC. It's definitely going to get heated. New Mexico State's already off to a good start, going to need that. Look at that, 15-2 and two under first-year head coach. Paul Weir, they're 2-0 oh to begin the season. UTRGV with a victory as well. The Lopes and Utah Valley tipping it off. Well, we mentioned New Mexico State's been kind of that team that GCU has been chasing since they started D1 play. And what better way to get it started against a win against Utah Valley tonight? And this is Josh Braun's first start in nine games. They need us 14 and a half points per game average. Yeah, the leader's outside shooting, too. He's a very smart basketball player. Goes how to go inside amongst the tree. Very good on the offensive glass. Runs the floor in transition well. It has great court vision. Utah Valley comes in with a non-conference mark of 8 and 7. They are led by a 6'11 forward by the name of Isaac Nielsen, the transfer from BYU. Yeah, Nielsen, you have to keep an eye on this guy. 25th of the nation offensive boards, 3.6 a game. Also hits at over 40% from the three-point arc. He's lethal all over the court. It's time to get Black Conference play started. Let's send it over to the public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to GCU Arena and tonight's Western Athletic Conference matchup between the Utah Valley University Wolverines and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Kendra Warden, one of the Girl Scouts from Troop 1107. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for the fantastic weather that you've been providing with us. We thank you for helping us all to travel to this game safely, and we look forward to a fun game full of sportsmanship. We say this all in your son's name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Kendra. <laughs> Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of our national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Pacheco Brothers, who all attend Alhambra High School.
Pacheco Brothers. The Pacheco Brothers with our national anthem. Shades of Jimi Hendrix. Kendra with her prayer, and we get the conference game started. Head coach Mark Pope in his second season, four years an assistant at BYU, also an assistant coach at Wake Forest, played at Kentucky on the 96 national championship team, a nine-year pro career, seven of which were in the NBA, a second-round pick of the Indiana Pacers, and a good buddy, Scott Williams. Here is his starting five, Connor Toulson, Brandon Randall, Kenneth Ogby, Zach Nelson, and Isaac Nielsen. Yeah, we're gonna pop number 11, Connor Toulson, 6'4", uh, excuse me, 185 pounds from Highland, Utah. This kid is an absolute sharpshooter. Went for 23 last game against Antelope Valley. He had a career high, seven made three-point field goals. Shoots 38% behind the arc. Let's introduce you now to Grand Canyon University. State Credit Union starting lineups. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you. For head coach Dan Martley, the sixth starting lineup, different lineup this season. Dwayne Russell, Jared Martin, Josh Braun, Keontae Vernon, and Kerwin Smith. Yeah, we'll stay with the little guys. Dwayne Russell coming off a dud of a game against UC Riverside. He's just scored 25 from the field, one of nine for three point field. Three goal, field goals, 12 points, two assists. But this guy goes to 24 a night. It's going to be interesting to see how he meshes with Josh Braun back in that starting lineup. I look for those guys to be one dynamic duo. Dan Marley in his fourth season as head coach. His associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistants, Chris Cremelone and TJ Benson. Director of basketball operations is Luke Dallariba. The assistant director of basketball operations is Daffy Fall. There you look at Zero the Hero, third overall in the nation. 24.2 points per game. He has scored in double figures in 18 straight games. Nine and six overall, seven and two on their home court are the Lopes. Time now for Scott's three keys to the game. Yeah, never poke a beehive. You're gonna run smart and get the shots you want against this Utah Valley University team, not the shot they want you to take. They want to play fast. Average 77 possessions per day. That's fifth in the nation. And Park City, UVU has some good beat that bangs the boards actively. You want to ski lodge, campfire rebounding mentality. Five bodies in the paint on every shot attempt. And welcome back, Cotta. Globes getting healthy, that's right. The mayor is back. Josh Braun Ke and uh, Darian Clark are back, and they must find their groove while not disrupting the balance of the unit. Namely, Dwayne Russell. Did you know Utah was the uh, Beehive State? I did know Utah was the Beehive State. I went with the whole Utah theme there. You know, uh, you know, you played Carter. Welcome back, Carter, don't you? Yes, I do. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe Kaplan. Gabe Kaplan. Yep. You know where he was from? It wasn't Utah. <laughs> Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> we are underway. The crowd will remain on its feet at GCU Arena until the Lopes hit their first bucket. Deontay Vernon to the left. Russell on the arc. Back out front. Josh Braun's going to try. Oh, it rings out. Kicked out the rebound. Connor Toulson. Kind of expected Josh Braun to be aggressive early in this game. Nice for Coach Marley to dial up a play for him for a three-point shot right at the top of the key. We expect a high, up-tempo game. The Wolverines averaging a tick over 80 points per game. Toulson driving, kicks back out. Three-point attempt off the mark and Vernon with the rebound. Winston Stiff, Kurt Walker, and Randy Richardson are the officials. Russell to his left, Martin inside, Kerwin Smith getting the start. Back to Russell. To his right, stopping, popping, and it is in, fans 
can take a seat. Yeah, the way Russell missed that shot repetitively at UC Riverside on the road, that's what he likes, left coming left to right, that right elbow jump shot. Randolph, transfer from Xavier. Ogby. Back to Randolph, looking for some room. Nelson trying to go down low and a dish to the left. Swarmed is Nielsen. Ma Randolph picks it up. Oh, I think they got a foul right as the shot clock was about to expire. Real. Looked like Darian Clark might be whistled for a foul underneath, or are they going to say the shot clock had expired? Nice, nice. Officials yeah. getting together. Great to see. Nice job defensively, active hands, getting a lot of deflections. Martin even used his foot on that one. Nelson coming out, trying to stop Russell high up the glass, doesn't drop. Nielsen got the rebound. Tolson up high, too high and too far. Going back out, Randall. Randall driving into the paint, back out. Tolson, long distance, short off the front of the rim. Tolson rushed that one. They like to shoot a lot of threes. He had 12 in their last game against Antelope Valley, career high in attempts. They like to shoot 30 to 35 three-point shots tonight. Wolverines with a big victory against BYU earlier this year. Braun looking for his first bucket after missing nine games off the mark. And the Wolverines on the run with Randall. Back out. Ooh, pulled down to Nielsen. Tolson. This is back out in the corner. That's short, but a put back easy for Nielsen. Yeah, that's where he likes to live. He likes to live right around that painted area. Gets over three and a half offensive rebounds a game. That's 23rd in the nation. Nielsen with that mouth guard, his mouth open. Harding Kerwin Smith. Near side. Russell looking for three. Too heavy. Pulled down. By Ogby. You think we got some opening night WAC conference jitters here? Both teams struggling from the field. Kick back out. Oh, foul underneath. Looks like Keontae Vernon. Yeah, you got Utah Valley one for four. GCU just one of five from the field. And you see this one here. Good pick and roll situation. Keontae Vernon coming over, gets that body contact. It's whistled for the foul. Uh oh, picked up by Vernon. Vernon's on the run. Driving left handed in for Keontae Vernon. Well, that was a thing of beauty. Nice job defensively guarding the baseline out of bounds play. Keontae Vernon off like a madman to the other end with a nice lefty lay in. Randolph down low. Tilson drives. Can't get back doored like that, but I like the fact Keontae Vernon didn't come over and keep create his second foul. Realized he didn't, was going to be late on the play, let the guy lay the ball in rather than getting his second personal foul. Probably a little fatigue too, running down the court. Back out, Vernon, jumper, heavy, rebound. Pulled down by Nielsen. Third for Nielsen. Nielsen to Nelson. Tulson, Tulson inside. Nelson puts it back. They really got it. That high, low passing working well. Russell, Martin quickly to Braun. Braun looking for that three, and he finds it. Welcome back. Nice job coming off a little bit of a up screen. Brings him up out of that left corner. Martin so quick, right spot on with the pass. Ooh, Randolph puts the left to Burners on. Oh, and around and down and go. Well, I could look to watch this matchup between Randolph and Russell. Martin, no, oh, it doesn't drop. Tip back, no. Braun couldn't get it. Pulled down by the Wolverines. Randolph driving, slashing into the paint, kicks back out. Nilsson to the right. Ogby. Off the rim, rebound. Martin. Ogby didn't start in their last game, didn't play even in their last basketball game. He's been nursing a sore back. So we're interested to see how he's able to go tonight. So in and out. A couple balls now in that tight rim down here on the south side has not been able to drop. Randolph Ogby. Ogby, a transfer from Utah. Corner bounce pass. Nielsen Smith. Vernon comes over, pushes back out, picked up by Russell. 
Look out, Dwayne on the run. Up high, off the glass. Poop and a horn, Dwayne Russell. Yeah, they were given chase, but there's no way you're gonna win that foot race against Dwayne Russell. And he does such a good job for a little guy, shielding his body. Excuse me, shielding the basketball with his body. No way for the Utah Valley University player to catch up with him, creates the foul, and Russell with the contact and the concentration. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Thank you, guys. I'm joined by women's volleyball head coach Tim Nolan. You recently finished your first season at GCU. What are your takeaways? You know, the, uh, the volleyball culture here we're building is great. Uh, the kids battled and competed really hard. I think we got to continue to develop our serve and pass game and keep working a little harder on the defensive side of the ball. And you and Dan Marley had a lot in common. Last year, his same team in the 2016 dealing with a lot of injuries. You guys, too, battling those injuries. Take me through that and where the health of the team is now. Yeah, you know, we suffered four season-ending injuries that's just really hard on the depth chart. You know, we lost three kids all in the same position. Uh, so, But we had kids step up and play out of position, and we battled. and. You know, we're finally getting healthy now and looking forward to the offseason and training and getting ready for next fall. And you spent nine seasons with USC staff. What are you looking to bring over that you learned with the Trojans program that made them so strong? You know, in those nine seasons, we instilled a lot of courage in, in difficult times, and that's the type of culture we want to build here. We want to build a tradition of winning and fighting every night. And with this school making its final year of transitioning to Division I action, and you guys have such state-of-the-art facilities, what's the reaction you get when you're out on the recruiting trail from future looks? You know, we've had great reaction from recruits. When they see Grand Canyon and they, and they look at the school and the academics and where it's all going, we're getting a lot of looks and a lot of support. What are your short-term and long-term goals for this program? Short-term, we want to compete every night. Uh, we want to try and win the WAC. And then long term, we want to be a perennial top 25 program in the country. We want to get in the NCAA 2 tournament every year, see if we get to the Sweet 16 in the Final Four. Big goals, but certainly attainable. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. We've been talking about, obviously, men's basketball, but across the board, looks making headlines when it comes to their state-of-the-art facilities and athletic programs here on campus. No doubt about it. Tim Nolan in his second season, the women's volleyball team, Gary and Clark. On the court for the first time, he's coming back after missing five games. Wolverines have committed three turnovers early on. The Lopes zero. Tolson leaves there, kicked back by Davenport. Long range from Tolson. Oh, looks like Martin's going to be called. The question is, he fouled that outside shot. Was that a two-point shot or a three-point shot? It looks like the officials three. are going to give him three yeah. field goals, uh, three free throws. Wolverines at this point, four for four from two-point field goals, four for four from three-point line. Oh, yeah, clearly behind the line on that one. Slight contact. First, this the second. It's a bonus shot right here. 77% free throw shooter, Connor Toulson from Highland, Utah. Better box out. Oh, did a nice job boxing out right now. Eight to four disadvantage on the, for the Lopes on the boards. And a junior college title, national title, is named the MVP, Salt Lake Community College. Russell to his left. Back out. Now to Vernon. He'll pull down, drive it to the paint. Back out. Martin, Russell, six, five. Counting down on the shot clock. He's going to have to put it up. Off the mark. Big rebound. And they got Stussman oh, inside. Yeah, Nielsen. Oh, excuse me. It was Nielsen underneath battling. <laughs> he couldn't battle it the, Battling the big. That, it's, yeah, you can see right there. Was it Keontae? Keontae Vernon did his did his work early, got that inside position. And he also just put two hands in the small of his back. Martin to Braun. Braun's gonna drive into the paint. Leans back too heavy underneath. Clark went off of Davenport and out of bounds. It'll belong to GCU. What hustle what? by Clark underneath.
Take a look at this one more time. Clark underneath, battling for this ball, and you can see it just tips the hand right there, goes out of bounds. Should be GCU's best. That appears to be the case. Jared Martin's gonna inbound. Russell. Russell drives, pulls back. Vernon leaves there for Martin. Martin's gonna drive. He's gonna have to dish it back out to Russell. Russell drives, stops, pops, and it finds its way up over the rim. Oh, he really had to fight that in. Nice job defensively that time by Utah Valley. Unfortunately for them, Russell just a little bit better at getting that contact and then finishing the play. Russell has seven. Stepped on the sideline there on the baseline, Davenport. one of the two, and another turnover for Utah Valley. Don't really want that ball to get below the free throw line and trying to walk the tightrope. You see that left foot, just a mid-step, catching the baseline, and another turnover. There you see, 4-0. Loose ball pulled down by Davenport. Davenport, Kelly Davenport, leaves it there. Foul. Tried the old pistol play with the dribble handoff. Unfortunately, he weren't set it, causing the contact and an offensive foul for another turnover. Utah Valley is a bit nervous, much like the Lopes here in the first half of this first half. Five turnovers for the Wolverines. Checking in for the first time, Oscar Freyer. Jared Martin will sit down. Russell just inside the arm. Four. Yikes. Clark, Freyer fell hard. Keontae Vernon. It looked like two GCU flick players fouled each other. <laughs> I, I don't know how they both ended up on the floor. Look at this one more time, fighting underneath. It, you got Freyer going to the offensive glass. He brings it to Clark, who was in a tussle with a, with a player underneath there. So officials just decided, I'm going to call a foul on one of those two. Clark gets his first personal foul. Inside, down low, no room. Wow, Clark and Vernon is swarming. Back out, Randolph looking for three of the Wolverines. Short rebound, pulled down by Clark. Great to see the extension on Clark and the shoulder injury coming back. He's building his strength. Talked to him before the game. Look for Braun again. Oh, bam! Welcome back again. Uh, Josh Braun's got it going. Two, just two of six, but every shot has looked good headed towards the hoop. Stutzman back out. Underneath, Toulson trying to find his way, finds a rebound and a foul underneath. Yeah, foul on Toulson. He can't believe he missed a little bunny right in front of the rim. Tries to go back in there, gets that contact. But look at Josh Braun, so good coming up out of that left corner. Seems like he's most comfortable coming from his left to his right. All on Russell. It's amazing to have Josh back up on the floor and what it means to this. GCU squad. Yeah, that is seven. They got 13 of the GCU 15 points. What a nice job, those two. The dynamic duo of Braun and Russell. Braun again. Bounce pass. Oh, and Stutzman just got a hand on it as Clark tried to put it home and drew the foul. Yeah, that's the one that makes me, when I had shoulder issues, that was the play that made me the most nervous when I was coming back from a little bit having my shoulder tweak. When you're going up over your head and now you've got contact with a defender, how is that shoulder going to uh, respond when you're moving side to side? Good to see the 51% free throw shooter. Not worried about that shoulder. He knocked that first free throw down. For the Lopes, number one, 6-0 run for the Lopes in the last minute, 37. Darian Clark chatted with him briefly while he was uh, doing some pregame stretching. And he just said he, he knows his limitations early on. Said it's just a matter of getting the strength back up in the shoulder. Yeah, nice little run here. A little spur trying to pull away. Utah Valley 7-0 run. Oh, almost got a turn turnover to steal there. Tom and Einan in the game for the Wolverines. Randolph being swarmed back cross court. Ogby driving. Off the glass and in. Ogby, nice draw. Might have got the beneficial of uh, not putting that ball down before he shuffled those feet. Needless, he got to the basket and finished the play. They really needed that bucket. Looking inside, Fifi Adu in the game. Oh, look out. Nice save by Oscar Freyer. 
10 on the shot clock. Russell looking to move on Randolph. Got the nice screen by Vernon. It's too short. Loose ball picked up by the Wolverine. Uh, Russell gets the foul. Time out of the floor. The Lopes up by six with 11-10 remaining in the opening half. Josh Braun returning to the lineup for the first time after nine games. He's got six points. And the Lopes are on top. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. For me, choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. I absolutely love sports, playing them and watching them, and I could talk about them all day. GCU has made it possible for me to pursue my passion of becoming a sports broadcaster. The program they had here and the direction it could take me was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Knowing that I could talk to a professor or a counselor about literally anything that has to do with my academia or even just my personal life was encouraging and exciting to know. The friends and the roommates that I've had in the last three years have made my quality of life a thousand times better. I am a GCU low and I will forever always be one. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Grand Canyon men's basketball is brought to you in part by Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. Girl Scouts of America night here. Mm. It seems to have received a uh, got got our, We got offering. our boxes, baby. Oh. We got Samoas. I've got my Thin Mints. I've wait, wait, what do, you mean, what do you mean your Thin Mints? <laughs> uh, you like you got some Thin Mints. You can try to pry I, these I from my... A, let's send it over to those. Kate. Try to settle this argument. Right Kate. now, <laughs> Kate, take it. Ow, well, guys, I'm going to defer to the Lopes squad here on this one. The guys told me Thin Mints, hand down, were their favorite. Josh Braun did say he likes to tag along those peanut butter chocolate ones. As for Jared Martin, he said he hasn't really dabbled in those much, you know, being from the land down under. It's a lot of Vegemite, but he said after the game, since this is the only place you can get Girl Scout cookies tonight, we will be diving in. Tag along. It's crazy really? people need to tag along. Stereotype. Oh, nice. By Randolph. Good footwork by Randolph down there. Little big man. Randolph a transfer from Xavier. Freyer looking for three. High rebound, all green. Lead is now four for GCU. Boydris in the game. Now Nielsen looking for long distance. The 40% plus three-point shooter, and he misses again. They're 0 for 6 from the arc. Are the Wolverines. Freyer flew in from the right side to snatch that board. That's twice now they've called. Sometimes there's a call du jour for the officiating crew, and I think this dribble handoff call, if you're not set, is going to get whistled every time. Martin second. Look at my old buddy there, Mark Pope, coaching up his team, calling out the signals. Played together at Milwaukee with the Milwaukee Bucks. Used to say, Pope is dope, is what the fans used to say. To be able to come in, started some games, but came off the bench and provided a big lift. Rockby, back down, Poitras, Poitras being swarmed there. Clark came out, Rockby tried to move on Freyer, didn't have any room, but he God, pulled back and drained it. Rockby went to the hole a, minute, a moment ago, got a good bucket inside, got the shooter's eye, and then knocks down that outside shot. Russell rings out. The drought, scoring drought continuing now, over two minutes plus for GCU while the Wolverines are in a 6-0 terror in the last minute, 58. Rebound, Braun, oh, goes out of his hands. Randolph comes up with it. Boydrips, near side, driving Ogby. Freyer got a hand on it. Yeah, Freyer said, no, you might have beat me with the first step, but my recovery is so quick, he still comes back here from behind. He's beaten on the play and still swats it away. Almost looked like it went off of Ogby's skull and out of bounds, but officials are going to let it go over to the Wolverines. Vernon back in. 
So far, the Wolverines owning the paint, outscoring GCU in the paint 12 to 4. Oh, and a big fall by Jordan Poydras. Gardner tried to go climb that louder and get that shot. But Poydras does a nice job really pulling away from the shot block and getting that left shoulder into Keontae Vernon. Just enough body con or contact right there with the upper body to call him. Cause the foul. Voyager is 76% free throw shooter. Averaging 10.2 points per game. Smith in for Keontae Vernon quickly. Second attempt. That brings out as well. Utah Valley, one of five from the line. Ooh, it's been moved. Yeah. I gotta say, he carried the ball coming out of that corner. Another turnover for the Lopes. You can see this one right here. The young freshman, he wants to go back the other way. And they let that go on the playground, but not so much at the college level. Davenport to his left, near side. Ogby, Poydras. GPA do on him. Poydras, a three attempt, and rings it home. Isn't that funny? He goes to the line, misses two free throws. And says I'll step back seven or eight feet from behind the free throw line and knock one down. 9-0 run for Utah Valley. They lead it by one. Russell trying to get the Lopes off the schneid here, and their drought continues up close to three and a half minutes. Russell hasn't hit one in a while now, just three of 11 shooting. He's had a few of those go halfway down before spitting back out. Davenport right by Russell. In the corner. Rung out. Tavan Einan trying to hit from the corner. Freya. Back out front. Stopping. Off the mark. Ooh, no. High percentage shot there. Definitely pressing. Both for their last five from the field of the Lopes. Just in about the last four minutes without a bucket. Telly Davenport to bring it up. Ogby, tied by Braun. Poydris. Moves to his right. Dishes back out quickly. Up over Braun. Off the mark. Pulled down by Clark. Ogby misses the three. Russell driving to his right. Back out. Fifi, he looks for three. Big rebound, Braun jumps up, and Ogby pulls it down for the Wolverines to the right, Poydras, up high, not enough. Underneath though, and waiting patiently, Ogby puts it back. That was a smart play by Ogby. He won the high handoff for the slam, but a lot of traffic around Ogby decided to come down with the basketball, and Utah Valley, I really like their motion. Their transition game is nice, and offensively, they're constant action. 11-0 run for Utah Valley, Fifi Adu, not there. Boy, both three-point shooting here for both teams, not sharp. Driving Poigris. Sherwood Smith called. Yeah, Coach Marley can't believe it. He thought Smith was straight up, but the officials are trying to say that he had his arms extended forward. Time out on the floor. The Wolverines on a tear. They lead it 20 to 17. 11-0 run the last four minutes, 43 seconds. As the Lopes came out on top, Braun and Russell looking sharp, but a lot of transition and just underneath the boards belonging to UBU. Yeah, they're a big, strong physical team that can shoot the three, get out in transition and run, so you'll have to watch out for them. But offensively, TCU had it going early, and now all of a sudden they've cooled off one play that they seem to like. It's the Josh Braun coming out of that left corner for the three-point shot. So. We can get a look at this one one more time. I, I like the setup right here. Dwayne Russell's got the basketball. You can 
You can see him right here, but look where Braun's starting. He's going to come up out of this corner here after the ball is swung over, then it gets swung back, and then Ross Braun is, is free to fire. That's just a real smart play there by Josh Braun there. The defense gets lost, and you give the mayor a split second, he's going to knock it down. TCU 0 for their last 7, 25% shooting at this point. Let's send it over to Case. Well, guys, maybe it's a little jitters. I know they've been playing for a few months now, most people are thinking. However, this is the WAC opener. And when I talked to the guys, they said there was just a different feeling in the air. They knew from when they woke up this morning, just an extra pep in their step and just really focused in on this. As uh, Jared Martin put it to me pretty simply, yeah, we're excited. This is what we've been prepping for all year long. As we know, the Lopes are finishing that final year and transitioning to Division One play. So they're not eligible come March Madness. So really their goal this season is to take the WAC Conference title home. And so the players, they are amped for tonight's game. So now, of course, the challenge is to play through that excitement. And Scott, when you look back to your playing days, obviously you need the preseason. And for the Lopes, it played out in their favor. They came out with a pretty strong record and got a lot of national recognition. However, did it feel different when you opened up that conference action? Oh, absolutely. And this is what this GCU basketball team is playing. This regular season is their tournament. They can't make it to the postseason tournament this year. They've been close to beating past uh, New Mexico State in the past. They are hell-bent on trying to win the WAC this year. Now they're banged up. Obviously, it's been uh, you know, a, a source of a problem for them, but now they're getting a little bit healthier. It's nice to have Josh Vaughn back there. And you can tell by this first half action that the mayor knows still how to put that ball in the basket from behind the arc. Yeah, Braun and Russell's have 17 of the team's 24 field goal attempts to this point. Braun looking to put one in. Off the mark to the left. The shot coming through and Smith puts it back. Thank you. That put it into a long throw. Yeah, Kate Dunk using his length around the basket. I like that finish with the left. Boydrich driving. Davenport down low, kick back out on B. Three point attempt out. Oh, underneath. Nielsen battling. Clark pulls it down, leads for Russell. Nielsen is long. They list him at 6'11, but boy, with that ring span, he's got to be close to 7 7 1. Tolson right on the foul on Josh Braun. His second personal foul. Just a side out of bounds, excuse me, a baseline out of bounds. The next foul on the Wolverines, the GCU will be in the one and one. Randolph back in for Tolson. PPA do to inbound. Quickly to Russell. Wiggers eyeing him. To Fifi. To Braun. Looking for three. And it is good. Back. Beautiful screen underneath. I wasn't sure if it was Kerwin, Smith, or Clark, but they freed Braun to run behind that arc and get his feet set. Driving and nothing but net as he puts it home with authority is Andre. Oh, nothing wrong with that back. Ogby is back. He did a nice job taking that one hard to the rack. Came down hard on that wrist. Braun stopping and it drops and he drew the foul. Davenport calls. Ah, the mayor is back. He knocked down that three-point shot. Got him 11 points. Now he comes back in. He gets inside that arc. Gets a little contact. Ties this basketball game up at 24. Here, Josh Braun one more time here. Gets that, that screen by Clark and just does a nice job getting just into the body of the defender. When they try to recover, they create the foul. Oh, kind of... Fading back on that free throw. Hasn't been to the line in a, in a while when he's had to try to calm himself after running hard. This is guys that one of the best shooters in the conference. He's passed out low, kicked back out, and Ogby hits it again. How about Ogby? Ron and Ogby are putting on a show tonight. Now give Ogby 11 points on five of nine shooting. Already at his game average, and Josh Braun hits a three. Ba bam! Well, Josh Braun said, You're going to put one in behind the arc. I'm going to go ahead and put my fourth in from behind the arc. Four of seven 
for Josh Braun from behind the arc. Now give him 14 points in his first game back. I thought he would probably go for about 14 or 15 for the whole game. I didn't realize he'd hit that number with 503 left to play in the first half. It's like a prize fighter matching blow for blow. I'd be down on one end, and then Josh Braun's coming back and delivering a shot. What a competitor. You know all that whole time he was out, those nine games that he had to rest that knee, that he was just chomping at the bit, waiting to get back on the floor to help his mates. Braun with 14 points here in the opening half. He averaged 32 a game against Utah Valley in the two games last year. Turnover as Nelson hit the hardwood. Look at this one, one more time here. We think Nielsen's gonna come over and, excuse me, Nielsen's gonna come over and set that screen, but he snaps it off, cuts it off short, rolls to the basket. Out of the 27. 4.45 to go opening half. Braun pulled down. Have a nine in. Jonas from Helsinki, Finland on the uh, court. Josh with Braun Fifi Edu, also from Finland. A lot of Finnish players. Put him down at U of A. That's the Josh Braun I know. Toes that line and knocks it down, back rim and down. Hey! Got the nice bounce. Two-point Lopes lead. Randolph to his left. Audrey gets back. Randolph trying to drive to the right. Clark tried to wrap around, and he's going to be called. Got to be a little careful reaching around. Randolph's got good wheels, good yep. speed, compact, got good muscle. Gets in there, gets that contact. Eh? Gone the line already. Now this will be free throws eight and nine. So got to the free throw line more in this first half than the Lopes have, but where they're really off to a good advantage is on the glass. Utah Valley with 22 rebounds and just 14 for the Lopes. Kerwin Smith checks in for Darian Clark. Clark with two personal fouls. Back knotted at 29 now. Four and a half to go, opening half. Conference opener. Russell pulls back down. Braun's going to try it from the same spot, and he is. Oh, he opens it. It doesn't even matter. He put a little bit of a bigger body on him, trying to get more of a hand in his face. Josh Braun says, I just got it stuck on automatic. Doesn't matter what you do, I'm going to shoot it. Moyder is off the mark to the left. Saw it when he left his hand. Jack Carr, pulled down the rebound, brings it up. To his right, Russell. Russell driving by Ogby up high. Oh, not there. Kerwin Smith tried to put it back. Yeah, I think there's going to be a foul. I, I think they got, Russell got that body contact as if he was going hard to the right, to the basket. And I love this one by Josh Braun. Just set a little screen and then pop all the way back out to the three-point line before the defense has a chance to recover. You can see the foul underneath there as Russell's going to go to the line. Lopes five of their last five after going 0 for 7. Nelson called for the personal foul. He's going to come back and sit down while Nielsen checks back in for him. Four minutes in county. Russell with eight points, three assists in this basketball game, and Vaughn's got 19 points. And one rebound in this game. That up kicks back out Poydras. Driving baseline. Oh my, look at that. A free line. Yeah, you don't see that many times. Coach Barley will not be happy about that. The Indian only pride themselves on pick and roll. Sometimes that corner pick and roll can be the hardest to defend. You don't like that ball getting below the free throw line. It puts too much pressure on the back line of the defense. Braun up high and it finds its way in. Josh Braun. The mayor's got it all Dusting working. The, and he behind the off. arc, yeah, behind the arc and the little floaters inside, getting the contact, getting the free throw line, got it all going just like Ogby does. Ogby bounces back to, at the other end, gets back into the uh, 
field goal scoring column. He got six, excuse me, 13 points on six of 10 shooting. Under three now to go, opening half. Three point GCU lead. Russell driving to his right, got some help from Kerwin Smith. Back out to Jack Carr, Fifi driving baseline. He's got some room, oh, kicks back out to Russell, seven, six. Oh, he tried to do a blind pass out of bounds. Ogby, 240 to go, three point lead, four on the shot clock. When we come back, the Lopes will inbound and quickly get off a shot attempt. They lead it by three in this Western Athletic Conference opener at GCU Arena. Leave it right here on CW6. GCU's College of Science, Engineering, and Technology offers a premier STEM education with relevant curricula designed to lead you to a career in the competitive fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. GCU is investing in the future of our STEM programs with multiple state-of-the-art facilities providing students with access to cutting-edge technology. Our STEM education is motivated by a Christian worldview which cultivates ethical decision-making. The College of Science, Engineering, and Technology fosters traits in adaptability, collaboration, creativity, as well as ethical and social awareness, which makes our graduates from our STEM programs more competitive. Through robust collaboration and partnership with industries that require a STEM-prepared workforce, our faculty concentrates exclusively on student success within a deeply nurturing Christian setting. Find out more at gcu.edu slash CSET. A lot of conference action has been going on for some of the strongest teams. Now, Villanova did take a hit earlier this week on Wednesday when they fell to Butler and breaking a 20-game win streak. The record now at 15-1 and after a victory tonight over Marquette, 93-81, the final there. Meanwhile, Baylor, number two, hosting Oklahoma State. They are at 14 and 0, so a win tonight could get them to that number one spot. Meanwhile, Zaga in action tonight. They're a late tip off at eight o'clock uh, at Portland. Number five, Zaga. A lot of people's pick for that final four slot. We'll see how it all plays out. Meanwhile, number six, Kentucky. They have Arkansas and the Wildcats sitting in that 17th spot today. They are three and 0 in Pac-12 play. Oh, my poor Tar Heels falling on some tough times right now. Loss at Georgia Tech. And Look at Tom Clark. Oh, he drew the foul on Davenport. Uh, he's a, he's a, he has oh, been he in fearless. attack mode this entire first half. If he had a knee problem, like you couldn't tell me. His outside shot is there. He's got the strength to pull up from distance and the power to go inside and get that contact. Josh Braun, 21 points in counting. Yeah, in fact, from the three-point line, he's five of eight. The rest of the Lopes, 0 for eight. So, trying to find his rhythm from the free throw line. Two and a half to go, opening half. The lead remains three for GCU. Randolph moves to his left, pulls back to his right. Ogden pulls down, ooh, shot hard. Ran into him. Back down low, Nielsen. Vaughn and Smith swarming him back out to Randolph. He drives, looking to shoot up and over Oscar Freire, and he finds his way. That is not an easy basket. Going to your left with a right-handed player, then you got the high jump Prayer, you have to loft the ball up over the top and look at Utah Valley falling back into a zone. Jack Carr driving up high, swatted away and out of bounds. It'll belong to the Lopes with 11 on the shot clock. Nice job by Nelson there. Cutting off that baseline drive, not letting Jack Carr get that one up over the top of the defense. Inbounds, gone. Pulls down, drives. Oh, stutter step. 
Yeah, I think they got him with a foul. Yeah. I think that left arm came off the ball, got into Poydras' chest. He's gonna get him for a push off. So 36-35 with 147 to go. This is the time of game, that final two and a half minutes, you normally saw GCU take command and take a little momentum into the half, but the Wolverines doing a nice job keeping within arm's length of the Lopes. Braun takes a seat with that first personal foul. That Marley doesn't want him to pick anything else up. Nelson doesn't go. Freyer climbs the ladder and pulls it down. Well, Freyer hasn't gotten the chance to go, but he's done a nice job off the pine keys, uh, on the glass. Shaq Carr. Randolph called for the... <laughs> Randolph's <laughs> trying to claim that, hey, I didn't kick it. He no, threw I... it off my leg. That one never works. Still never works. <laughs> Freyer swarmed and muscles his way out. Current Smith can't get it. Oh, the rebound kicked back out. Fresh 30. Russell stopping. Floater. Good. Russell. Oh, Russell did a nice job. He got by the first line of the defense and throws Nielsen just enough to have enough time to get that floater up over the top of his long arm. He's going to go to Nelson. Nelson trying to turn. Soft floater doesn't fall. Freyer leaves for Russell. How many boards is that for Freyer now? That's only his third board. That seems like he's been all over the glass. 20 on the shot clock. Back out, Freyer. GPA do. 16, 15, trying to move. Oh, nice. On Randall, kick back out, Freyer. Moves inside the arc, has a little bit of room. Rebound underneath, Kerwin Smith. Doesn't drop. 35 and counting. Nice job of Kerwin Smith getting on that glass, but you got them long arms of Nilsson like that, and you're so far against the baseline, tough to create an angle to get that one in. You would have been better out bringing that one back out, playing for the final shot of the half. Send it over to Kate. Well, with 21 points to his name for the mayor, Josh Braun, you better believe the Lopes, happy to have him back in action along with Darian Clark. And the guys, well, let's just say they're happy to be back out helping their team. I'm feeling pretty well. Um, just happy to be back on the court. Um, just dealing with the shoulder is just kind of kind of tough, but I'm just happy to be back on the court. Um, so yeah, I'm just going out and do what I can do. You know, I know it's my first game back in probably about a month, but I think I'm ready to uh, step on the court and help contribute to the team. Rehab's been good. It's been, uh, you know, it's tough sitting out and watching, you know, get sick of rehab after a while, but I'm um, feeling pretty good. Feeling good, feeling stronger. Um, slimmed down a lot, you know, lost, uh, Lost a lot of weight as far as like muscle mass and stuff, so feeling a lot quicker and a lot, um, a lot more athletic out there. So it's been good to kind of have some time to to lose some of the, the the muscle and the bulk, you know, and lean out, get some lean muscle. We'll uh, you know have some time off so that I could feel a little lighter on the legs and um, lighter on my feet. So um, excited to get out there and just uh, have some fun with the guys again and and drive out quickly called after the Wolverines unsuccessful 20.9 as seconds remaining the lead is three yeah, I'd say Josh Brown's feeling good <laughs> he's off the 21 points a season high this year is 25 points he's gotten that twice this year against Penn and Merrick Kate obviously great to have both of those players on the hardwood for the GCU Lopes yeah, you know, and I think it especially uh, helps their uh, mentality too. You know, for since Josh and Darian went down, both of them had the goal of returning to whack play. So to be back out there, I think that also adding to their play. And hopefully, I would think Dan Marley hoping that this kind of energizes the squad, especially in the second half. Scott, I'm sure you can remember when key players return into action. It kind of just builds up the entire team. Yeah, it's a nice boost, and I'll be interested to see. You know, Russell's always been the one they've designed these last plays for. I wonder if Braun, since he's got the hot hand, is who they go to here in its final 13 seconds. Russell, I'd buy Poydress. Nine, eight, looking to make a move. Russell, back to Braun. Braun pulls down, trying to fight his way for a three. Quickly to PPA do. Oh, off the front of the rim. They were looking for Josh Braun. He didn't have it. Pushed it out to Fifi, and his shot attempt. Ball short. As a good half, I think that 
TCU got what they were looking for, a tempo that they were comfortable with, but were not able to shake the Wolverines. It's a three-point advantage going to the break. Over to Kate. It's a nail-biter, literally. I just saw you uh, biting your nails there. This is obviously a close game, but this is what WAC conference play is all about. How are you feeling with that first half of conference play in the world? Well, I mean, it's okay. We got to do a better job of guarding the basketball. They're getting to the basket too much, and then we got to have somebody score besides Josh. I mean, we're, it's great to have him back. You know, Dwayne's missed some shots, and he's lost his confidence. Uh, just got to keep firing, and we got to find a way to get it inside and then rebound a little bit better. But, you know, we're up by three, so uh, hopefully we'll stay hot or Josh will stay hot. Yeah, well, obviously you want the whole team to follow in suit. But what's it mean to have Josh back into this lineup, 21 points to his name here? Well, he's the preseason WAC player of the year. I mean, he gives us a lot of options on the floor. Um, he can score in so many different ways. But like I said, it can't be, you know, Dwayne was going through the same problem when he was out there. He was trying to score all the points. So it just can't be Josh. Guys have to step up. All right, wishing you the best of luck in the second half. Literally, guys, as I came over to Dan Marley, he was biting on those nails. I'm sure this one a little bit closer than he wants, but it's exciting competition when it comes to conference action. No doubt everything's amped up a bit once conference play starts. Russell and Braun have 33 of the 38 points in the opening half. Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities from Phoenix, Arizona and GCU Arena after we take this timeout. Our company is Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I present to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the dorm mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a dorm mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype, and we came up with the mattresses that we have now, and after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. <laughs> you can see the community thriving along with GCU, and just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope, and I, and I tell it to everyone, like, go to GCU, Lope's up. I'm very, very proud. to perform these in national competition. I'm Kate Longworth and we welcome you back here at halftime. As we mentioned, close game and the excitement is in this arena as we talk about conference play as the cheer and dance squads keep the excitement going. And there's something else powering these fans tonight. That would be some Girl Scout cookies. And I am joined now by CEO Tamara Woodbury with the Girl Scouts. Over 1,000 Girl Scouts in the house tonight. And this is the only place in the Valley where you can buy Girl Scout cookies right now. What's it like to be a part of this event? It's exciting. We're so thrilled to partner with GCU for our big Girl Scout cookie sale kickoff. And Kendra, you are a part of the action tonight. When you think of Girl Scouts, a lot of times you know all about the community service, but everyone gets very excited about cookie season. What's it like to have it here now? Um, it's definitely really exciting. My troop got to set up a booth tonight, so we really enjoyed that. Um, and the girls, there's a lot to learn through cookie selling, goal setting, money management, etc. And when you talk about the goals of a Girl Scout, I know, Jordan, you got to learn about a lot of the values. You attended the Leadership Academy here at GCU. What was that like? Um, I learned a lot about 
the name of it, I'm sorry. But um, we learned a lot of about like, how to deal with our money and, stuff, and how to do stuff when we earned it. Learning a lot of valuable lessons, and we've been having a discussion with the TV broadcast team tonight and the basketball team. What's the most popular selling cookie? Uh, by far, Thin Mints. That's what we thought. What's your favorite, though? Um, mine is a Samoas. Oh, see? So we're getting different ones in, and it's pretty exciting because there's a new cookie on the market, right? So this year, um, for our 100 years of selling cookies, we released the S'mores cookie. Um, you know, s'mores are something really well known for Girl Scout camp, so we turned them into a cookie. Um, it's kind of a graham cracker sandwich cookie with a chocolate and marshmallowy filling. All right, well, we'll have some more action coming up on our Lopes pregame show tonight, and it's exciting with new cookies in the mix, and always exciting to hear what the Girl Scouts are doing for the community. I'm excited because I hear gluten-free cookies are in the market for the Girl Scouts, so we'll see how that all shapes up. Meanwhile, we'll be back with the halftime show. Remember, cheer and dance squads performing their national routines. More of that right after this, plus highlights of that first half with Barry and Scott. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. Here I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice. I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Back live at GCU Arena, the lead is three by GCU in this Western Athletic Conference opener against Utah Valley. As the dance team entertaining here, part of their national routine, they'll be heading to uh, Florida shortly for the Nationals. Very good tell. Scott Williams, uh, just long enough to put down our Girl Scout cookies. Hopefully, I don't have any thin mints on my teeth. But uh, uh, opening half, Josh Braun comes back, plays fearless, coming back from that knee surgery. 21 points, 5 of 8 from three point land. Dude was fantastic. And uh, like Coach Marley said, going through the break, he did it in a variety of different ways from the outside, inside, foul line. Let's take a look at our halftime highlights. We begin with a steal from Keontae Vernon. I like Keontae Vernon when he gets his wheels and goes out in transition. Just another added thing, something that he's added to his game there. And then I love this one here by Nielsen using his length inside. He was a beast. 22 to 6 disadvantage for the Lopes points in the paint. Nielsen's got nine boards with Josh Braun. Welcome back. He was five of eight from behind the arc, knocking down threes from all over the place. And then Russell beat B, piece of the other end. He had himself. 11 points in that first half, but just four of 12 shooting. He's got to find his his groove and then Randolph. Wow, he's big, strong, and gets inside there. Little big man playing amongst the trees. That was part of a 13-0 run, and Boy just knocking down that one from behind the arc. That was after he had missed two free throws. He went back with the long ball. Josh Braun couldn't get that one. Then Kate Dunk on the glass, doing a nice job on the old glass there. Uh, got to start tonight, and then Osby, wow, played like a man possessed. Just one three-point shot, but the damage in front of the arc. He had 13 points in this one, and then Braun, we already saw him knocking down on a couple threes, and then he tried to set up one for the end of the quarter for Braun. Didn't hit that one to go, but knocked that one down. 21 points in the first half for Braun. Lopes got to do a better job getting higher percentage shots, so just 35% shooting in that first half, and doing a good job taking care of the basketball. Just three turnovers. 
Well, right now, Josh, obviously, five of eight from three-point land. is 21 points help leading the way. And it's, as uh, Coach Marley told Kate right off the uh, end of the half there, they've got to find some scoring elsewhere. And right now, UVU outscoring the uh, Lopes in the paint 22 to 6. Yeah, big disadvantage. I know that uh, Keontae, Ver uh, yes, Keontae Vernon, Darian Clark, and, and Smith will, will try to get themselves going in there. But you got to get Martin and Frere involved attacking that glass. Fifi Adu, Shaq Carr, all those guys have wheels and the ability to be able to get to the rack. All right. We'll be more back with more of our halftime festivities from GCU Arena before we tip off the second half. 38-35, GCU on top of Utah Valley in this opener for Western Athletic Conference play. Our company is Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I presented to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first, we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the dorm mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a dorm mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype, and we came up with the mattresses that we have now, and after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. <laughs> you can see the community thriving along with GCU, and just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope, and I, and I tell it to everyone, like, go to GCU, Lope's up, I'm very, very proud. Making things happen for the Wolverines tonight is Ogby. He has 13 points for his squad, followed by Randolph. He is coming in with nine points. And as you can see, number 10, Jordan, getting six points to his name. Meanwhile, the talk of the town here in the Valley is that the mayor, Josh Braun, is back. 21 points to his name. He was five from eight beyond the arc. And right behind him, Dwayne Russell with 11 points. Now, the two of them combined for 32 points of the Lopes total, 38 points. We're seeing them playing some strong basketball. Josh Braun obviously excited to be out there and it's showing in his play. But Dan Marley said the rest of the team, they need to step it up the second half if they want to record their first victory in conference action. How it all play out? Well, only time will tell. And luckily, that time is near. Stick with us on this break, and we'll be right back with more college basketball action here on the CW. Our company is Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I presented to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first, we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the dorm mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a dorm mattress, and that's when we started to come up with a prototype. We brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype, and we came up with the mattresses that we have now, and after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. 
adapt. You can see the community thriving along with GCU. And just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to stay on the Lope and I, and I tell it to everyone, like go to GCU, Lope's up. I'm very, very proud. Back at GCU Arena, Barry B. Tell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth. 38-35 is the score. As the Lopes lead the Wolverines. Josh Braun lighting it up, 21 points in the opening half in his return after missing nine games. I like that fact that he came out right from the beginning, was very aggressive in this basketball game. Took the first shot that he got that he touched the basketball, and then once they got that first one to go, it gave him confidence to keep firing behind the arc. He knocked down four three-point shots early in that half and then did a variety of ways to get himself inside, inside the arc. He got himself in the paint where he got fouled, went to the free-throw line, knocked a couple down from the free-throw line. Then he went back outside and finished his scoring from behind the arc with a three. Finished it with five three-point shots in the first half alone. Season high is only 25. He's got 21 in the first half. There is Mark Pope's spouse behind the bench with a contingent of fans from Utah Valley. Yeah, Leanne Pope. She used to work with David Letter and his personal assistant. David Secretary. Letterman? Yeah, David Letterman. She was looking Yeah. She has some great stories to tell about David Letterman. I bet. I like David Letterman. You ever see his top ten list? That was my favorite part of the show. Oh, that was good. Of course I saw it. It was like a trademark. It was like your three keys. <laughs> He probably never talked about Gabe Kaplan. Braun looking down! Oh my! Welcome to the second half, Josh Braun. He has got it dialed in from behind the arc. Yeah, the, the Lopes fans get to sit early when Josh Braun's back on the floor. Oh, it was two. Just inside the arc. Nelson. I doubt I'm the only uh, individual that's pleased to see Josh back on the uh, hardwood for GCU. Tolson trying to put back underneath. Nielsen gets the rebound, a fresh 30. Pulling down his Ogby, driving. Well, that was a bit sloppy. Yeah, you gotta control that glass. They're doing getting the Wolverines too many opportunities for second chance points. And you can see Ogby going in there hard to the rack. And Keontae Vernon does a nice job trying to give up his body for his teammates, but clearly moving to his right as all the was attacking that basket. Tough one, his third personal foul for Keontae Vernon. Nielsen, I mean, he averages nine and a half rebounds. You know he's tough and he's long. You gotta keep him off that offensive glass. He's got 10 boards, and we still got the whole second half to go. Vernon pulls down the miss by Ogby. So, tied by Randolph. Move to his right, Braun gets back out. Mark up high. Oh, yeah! Come Well, they like the high handoff. I think teams are getting used to Coach Marley running that on the first possession of basketball games. So he has disguised it by moving it back a couple of possessions in the rotation. Oh, got the hand in it. Who did it, Kerwin? Yeah, Martin, tell him, hey, guys, you get that trap down there, just keep your hands high. Don't reach down. You start reaching down, and then they call that foul, but I love that one there. And Martin throws that high hand off just Beautiful. as good as anybody on the team. And now he gets the deflection and the steal, lopes off and running. Can't overlook the contributions of Jared. Martin may not be hitting it as far as points, but leads the team, steals. Russell to his right, back over to Jared. Jared's gonna move into the paint. Just just down low. Ooh. Vernon, back out. Yeah, Looks like it belonged to the Lopes. Going back to Martin, he may not always get the assist. There's a you used to do hockey that the hockey assist. It's the pass that leads to the assist that yep. leads to the bucket. I would think he would be the team leader in the hockey assist category. Russell looking for three. His first three. He's been. In. Wolfer from the three-point arc. And, and there is my point exactly. Some, a play like that probably won't show up in a statistic for Martin. 
but instead of reaching after the basketball, he just puts his head down and drives as hard as he can to the other end. And then was it Randolph just uses that off arm and pushes him away, and he creates the you know, the foul and the turnover. So that's just as good as any stop you can get if you're a Coach Marley uh, and his staff. Russell rings out. Randolph stepped in front of Toulson, picked it up. Bounce pass to Ogby back. Now Randolph moving to his right. Toulson driving, baseline up high, hits the side of the backboard. Curran Smith leaves to Braun, Braun to Russell. Back to Braun, a long three. Out, oh, but on the run was Kerwin, couldn't pull it down. Randolph on the run for the Wolverine. That fell off the paint, don't want him to get inside. Ogby for three. That was nice. Randolph took that ball down in that painted area. They shut him down, but you had three players that had to commit to stopping the ball, and Ogden just trailed right in there behind that basketball, behind the arc, and knocked down the shot. His kid is playing some basketball. Kenneth Ogby, how about the Utah transfer from Munich, Germany? Uh, he's been doing a little bit of everything. Most of his damage in that first half came inside taking that ball hard to the rack, and then I love that one right there. That was just a smart play. Realized he couldn't finish it with the dunk, came back down with it, took his time, waited for the defense to pass, and then that one was hard to the hole. I thought he hurt his wrist. He had slammed that thing down so hard, and then knocking down the outside shot here in the second half, and again, attacking that rack. So, Kenneth Ogby has been a man that they have got to try to figure out a way to slow down. Season high was 28. At Denver, he's got 17 tonight. Fans, this is the opener for the WAC Conference opener, of course, but be sure to get your men's basketball tickets right now. Get conference tickets for upcoming games against New Mexico State, Seattle University, and CSU Bakersfield. And remember that GC Arena is a great place to bring the entire family. Reserve your tickets now by contacting the GCU box office at 602-639-8979 by logging on to WolfsTickets.com. Great crowd of students returning from the holiday break this weekend. It's got nice to have the Havocs back in the house. It provides a, an energy level that we didn't really have over the break. I know we had some Great groups crowd. come in here yeah. and really tried to pump this place up, but it just can't do it the way the Havocs can. Youthful enthusiasm. <laughs> the steals are in favor of the Lopes Ford and nothing over Utah Valley. Look at Josh Bond now with 23 points. In 20 minutes of play. 16.56 to go and Keontae Vernon will inbound. Interesting to see what Coach Marley dials up here. They've gone back to a man-to-man -man set, so want to see how they attack this man-to-man -man defensive pressure. Right, down low, chips it inside to Smith. Smith down low, Vernon trying to back his way in. He gets fouled on the play. It's like Nelson. They were trying to go into Kerwood Smith and then bring Josh Braun out of the right corner this time. They did a nice job defending it, and Kerwin Smith didn't force the pass. He saw Vernon down on that block and got in the basketball, and Vernon did a nice job taking his time, gathering, gaining the body contact, and going to the line here. That's the cut of the rim. A little pin drop in here. Nanti averaging 8.9 points per game. Double-double, 14 and 11 at UC Riverside. Really the uh, lone shining star in that matchup. Well, he got that early deuce on the steal and fast break, and that was his first point since then. So we've seen Kerr, or Keontae Vernon start slow and all of a sudden get a gang of points. I wonder if that'll be the one that gets him going. Rockby doesn't fall for him. Braun pulls down the rebound. Nielsen is as good as he plays. He might have the worst mouthpiece in college basketball. I think he's got he's got it, so it looks like he's got no front teeth. Oh, it brings out for Josh Braun. Josh Braun looking to fire behind that arc every time he catches the ball. You know, like you said, that one was 
even more than halfway down before it rattled out. Tolson looking inside to Nielsen, and he delivers it. Yeah, Nielsen's been doing a good job with those pick and rolls. That time he was rewarded by going hard to the basket after the pick. 11 points, excuse me, 11 rebounds, and now six points. Braun back out front, Vernon, top of the key, over to Martin. Martin looking to move on Ogby. Oh, and he bites Kerwin Smith! I don't know how he found him! Oh, nice job. This guy's so crafty delivering the ball, and Kate Dunk knows how to send it home. Bravo by Randolph. <laughs> I think Randolph's had enough of seeing number 42 up in his chest. Start moving those feet, creates a turnover. Good job by Martin. That's twice now he's got it. Randolph to commit turnovers. There's one here by Martin once again. Just kind of slipped that one between the wickets there of Ogby and over to Smith. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Thank you, guys. I am joined by one of the rising stars on the women's volleyball team here at GCU, Heidi Carpenter. Thanks so much for being here with us and very impressive as a freshman. You started all 27 matches and led the team in assists and aces. And you're a local product coming out of Mesa High. What was the first year of college action like for you? Um, well, the change of pace was definitely the biggest difference from going from high school to college. And it was just really awesome to be on the court with other young teammates and to make the team go on the rise. And you did go to Mesa High. What was the draw to being a player here for GCU? Um, it's really an honor to be able to play on the team and to have an impact on the other teammates and to grow together. And I'm guessing it's fun for you too that a lot of your family and friends can attend your matches. Yeah, it's really cool to be nearby because all my family can still come to all the games, so it's really awesome. And they're tuned in to you tonight, I know, watching from home. And one thing I think a lot of athletes wonder about when they're in high school, and I'm sure your parents want to hear how you did it, what was that transition like when you're coming from high school to college and now you're a Division I athlete? What's that mean? What's that role for you? Um, it's definitely something to think about and it's awesome because you you just you have to be committed and it takes a lot of time, but it's awesome to be able to work at something that you love. And now it's the off season. What are you doing to enjoy yourself and also get ready for the season next season? Um, we're just focusing on schoolwork and on our specific individual skills and working out and just having a good time on campus. All right, thank you so much, Heidi. Good luck with the rest of your freshman year. Thank you. All right, guys, pretty impressive. A freshman already starting all 27 matches, leading the team in some impressive categories. Heidi's got some big shoes to fill, but I think she's up for it. No doubt about it. Injuries were dealt a big blow for Coach Nolan and the squad back. Again, full strength, hopefully. Russell stopping. He's going to shoot from three, and he hits nothing but that. Well, it has been the Russell and Braun show tonight. Russell hasn't had the rhythm offensively, but he's hit some big shots when the Lopes have needed it. Ogby goes high, doesn't go. Rebounds kicked out. Tabanainen. Davenport kicked out. Nelson. Russell called before Keontae. Got Keontae Vernon trying to take a charge, but inside that restricted semicircle underneath. We'll go back to the Wayne Russell one more time. I love this one right here. Hand down, man down, foot fake, backs him up just enough to get a clear look at the basket. Marley's going to have to bring in Kerwin Smith here quickly for Keontae Vernon. Vernon's going to sit down with four personal fouls. Inbound by the Wolverine. Boydrus, eyed by Braun, back out. Tomadinen to his right, Davenport. Comes back out front to his left, Boydrus. Driving his on Doesn't go. Braun with a rebound, wrapped up by Nelson. Yeah, they got their arms in it's why Nelson wanted that basketball back. He and Josh Braun have a little bit of a laugh. But it was kind of like a little, uh, they call that MMA, you know, when you start hand fighting with the guy, you see he's got his arm tucked in there, and I'm gonna make sure I get the official to notice that you are reaching in for this basketball, and you're gonna get whistled for the foul. So I'm gonna let go of that arm until the official blew his whistle. 
Even Josh Braun, you know, he can laugh with the guy that just got called and he's going to sit down. Russell. Clark. He's back after missing five games with that right shoulder injury. Sustained at the University of Arizona. Russell's going to try again. Oh, my goodness. Back. That was nice, because he sized the taller opponent up and just said, okay, I'll freeze you, then I'll take a quick dribble just to back you up so I get the clean look at the basket. 8-0 run, it's a 10-point lead. Ooh, just kept in bounds by the Wolverines, Poydras. Toulson moves to his left, back to his right. Smith's coming out. Oh, again, Wilson finds his way on the floor by himself. Rebound for Kerwin Smith. Slowing down the tempo a bit. Now to his right, stopping at the top of the free throw line, and nothing but net. He's, he's touched nothing but twine here for the last three attempts. Yeah, Braun show early. Now Russell finding his rhythm. He's had his last three field goals drop. 19 for Dwayne. Boydrich to his left, overlook. Babanainen, that's short. Rebounds kicked out. Russell. Put on the vapor trail and picked up that one. Yeah, I got a second rebound, cracking back down from the top, helping out the bigs underneath. Trying to cut into that disadvantage on the glass. 33 to 26 now. Braun to the corner. Three. Good! Wow. Three in the last four field goals now for the Lopes. Have been three-point shots. Mark Pope needs a timeout. 56 to 41. Finally, Davenport calls the timeout. This place is going bonkers. 13 0 run for GCU over the last two and a half minutes. Go back this one to Russell here. He just freezes the taller opponent, shoots it right up over the top of him. And then I love this one here. Gets in its favorite spot on the floor, going left to right, knocking that one down. And then finds Braun in the corner. He knows how to send Baby to bed. Wolverines without a point over the last three minutes, two seconds. Send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, this is just what the doctor ordered for this recovering Lopes team. I think a question on everyone's mind. I know Scott Williams has brought it up in a couple of our meetings prepping for games. Just how were Russell and Braun going to come alive together out on the court? We really saw Russell come into his own this season, taking over when Braun was down, leading this team when it came to scoring. But tonight, he was struggling a bit, and Dan mentioned at the break to me that, you know, his confidence, he was seeing that Russell's confidence was taking a bit of a hit. But I think what you see right now, this sequence in the second half, where Braun and Russell taking turns from beyond the arc, both making it, the team fired up. I think you're seeing just how dominant and dynamic these two can be when they both get going out on the court. And Scott, I said this has been a hot topic for you. How do you like how this is playing out and what do you envision as we continue this conference play with both of these guys hopefully helping? Well, I, I think it's going to be fantastic. I think that they are taking turns finding their opportunities on the floor, not trying to go bounce back and forth. I think what Braun had it going, Russell deferred to him. Now that Russell seems to have it going, all the team is deferring to Russell, so there's no reason why they both can't be 20 point a night scorers. Tolson looking for some room underhand off the glass. Nice movement by Connor Tolson. Yeah, and give the coaching staff and Mark Post staff a big credit. They got a play that they wanted coming out of that timeout after a big GCU spurt. They ended up getting a shot at the rim. Tolson just two of eight in the game. He came in, their leading point getter at 14.9. Second half shooting 63.6% 6 by GCU. Russell, oh! Tried to put it up the right. Sloppy play underneath. Very Clark. Yeah, much like what happened down the time down before where Nilsson got tied up with his arm caught by Josh Braun. This time, same thing happened Darian Clark underneath. So I guess that kind of even them, even them up a little bit there. Wonder a little bit of the second half fatigue for Clark and Pierce. That's that uh, Braun's looking solid. Yeah, that's that dribble handoff call we saw a couple of times in the first half. That's going to be the call to Zuru tonight. You go with that dribble handoff, see you continue running right into the defender that's trying to guard the man who's receiving the 
basketball, and officials have been blowing that one consistently tonight. It looked like Jared Martin knew exactly what to do, though. Martin's going to try for three. Oh, and Green. Oh, man, it's good to see that. Well, that's the first one we've had that's really halfway down to spit back out and then fall back in again. You don't normally see that off the backboard, though. Three big rebound, Clark. 16 point lead. Whoops. On fire here in the second half. Good to see Clark on that glass. That was a tough rebound there. You're going underneath the basket. It comes out long. He collects his fourth board. Martin pulled down back to Russell. Russell, oh, careful. Back to Martin. He's going to try for three. Ring out. Rebound. Oh, they fought after it. Clark and Braun. Yeah. Both looking up at the basketball. I don't think Braun saw that Clark was about to grab the basketball. Time out on the floor, 11.15 to go. Second half, GCU 59, Utah Valley 43. Stick around, more to come right here on CW6. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things that can't necessarily be taught, and so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success to have someone say, like, I want you. That's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you changed my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Lopes on a 16 to two run over the last four minutes, 20 seconds. They lead it, 59-43. In this black opener at GCU Arena. Three point shooting, 36% for GCU, 17% for Utah Valley. And Utah Valley's gotten some good looks from behind that arc. They haven't had a able to drop now. DCU pushes that thing out, like you said, it was a 16-point advantage. They can just maintain this type of lead here for the next five minutes. Obviously, things will be looking good notching their first conference victory of the season. Dolson to his lap. Smith. Russell got a hand on it. Picked off. Back to Russell. Russell's waiting for reinforcements. Leaves for Braun. Braun driving baseline. Looking to kick back out. Ooh, foul call. I thought the basketball might have got poked out of Braun's hand, I in but the I corner. think just a little bit of a rust there. Braun forgotten he had dribbled the basketball, put it back down again on his own. Randolph, Martin and Smith. Randolph weaving his way through. Nelson with an open look. Too heavy, pulled down by Braun. The struggles continue from behind the arc. I think this is a three-point happy shooting basketball team, but they get themselves in some trouble when they are cold from behind the arc and they keep trying to bang away from behind the arc. They were having their most success when they were going inside in the first half. They had that big advantage points in the paint, 22 to six. Now they're shooting all threes as soon as they fell from behind, but digging themselves a deeper hole. Three of 19 from the arc. In the corner, Martin. Oh, it rings out. He uh, couldn't believe it. Yeah, and, 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 and GCU would have to worry about the same thing as Randolph Martin to the hole here. Martin got a hand on top of the basketball, but also got part of Randolph's wrist. GCU doesn't want to fall in love with the three-point shot either. They can try to hold on to this big lead by going inside, trying to get higher percentage shots, put the pressure on that defense to play basketball without foul. Randolph connects on the front end. Randolph, a 72 percent free throw shooter. That, that one barely even touched the, the net. But this time he 
Kind of rattled that one around the rim before it dropped down. 14 point lead for the Lopes here with just over 10 minutes to play. Ball for Randolph. So Braun. That's Braun. Poitras here. They're throwing some bows at one another. Poitras is getting into Braun's body, trying to pull him down, and Braun's giving them some forearm shivers to get him up off of him. Poitras called. Inbound. Martin. Down low. Russell. Wilson on him. Comes back out front. Moving Russell in the corner. Martin's gonna try for three. Too heavy. Oh, rebound underneath. And the put back Kerwin Smith. Kerwin Smith using his length around the basket real well that time. Got it on one side of the basket and then used the rim as a, as a help to get to the other side. And Tolson hits for three. And let Tolson heat up. He knocked out seven threes in their last contest against Antelope Valley, a career high seven threes. Got just three field goals tonight, a one of three from behind. Russell stopping, popping. Heavy rebound, pulled down by the Wolverines. Randolph, Randolph on the run. Off to the right, leads in the corner. Oh, how did that go? Is that Tolson again? Who was that? Yeah, yeah that was Tolson. He's knocked down two in a row here. Yeah, he can heat up quick. Coach Marley sees that spurt coming, decides to get a timeout. That 16-point lead down to 10 real quick after a couple pulls for three-point shots. Now yeah, we started talking about that three for 19 stretch. Now they're five of 21. Yeah, that one was one where he looked yes. like he had Martin trying to lean into him there, and he says, hey, where's the ball? Where's the end one situation there? He was on my side of my body. I want to go to the line and shoot for the four-point play. Mention this is the uh, Lid lifter on whack play for these two teams. Dwayne Russell coming in, the scoring leader at 24.2. LaBelle Boyd from UMKC at 19.3. Antonio Green from UTRGB at 18. Fred Sims Jr. from Bakersfield at 17.8. And Nick Dixon at 17.4. Tolson, of course, coming into the game 14.9 on the season overall. We want to remind everybody the Dan Marley Show coming up in its entirety following this game. Be sure to tune in to an up-close look at the GCU men's basketball team. Recaps of recent games. We'll also hear detailed game analysis from Coach Dan Marley. Stay tuned for the upcoming shows on the 21st of January, February 4th, February 25th, and a final season recap show. That's the Dan Marley Show coming up on CW6. Ten point lead, 8.51 on the clock. Be interesting to see what Coach Marley draws up this time. He has a variety of options he can go to. We got Jared Martin, who's knocked down a three here in recent moments. Of course, Russell's been hot here this half. Braun's been hot all game long. Where will he go now to try to get a high percentage basket? Clark, back in his way in, turns, soft quarter. Doesn't make it. I right, go inside to the fifth-year senior, Darian Clark, on the block. Randolph driving, muscles his way in. That time he got the better of Martin. Used those broad shoulders, got into Martin's chest. Straight enough contact, get enough space. Get that one up over the longer Martin. Randolph with a double-double. Eight-point game. Eight-0 run for Utah Valley. Ron to Martin inside. Kerwin Smith, that's stoned. Racing after Martin, but he's stopped by Randolph. Goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Lopes with six seconds left to go on the shot clock. Not too many times you see Kerwin Smith get the ball this close to the basket and turn and get it sit back. He said not enough postage. Nice job coming over some weak side defensive help. Better hurry up and get this one up quickly. Officials want a timeout here. Look like Darian Clarks. He might have lost the contact again. We've seen this happen one other time before in the game, but just want to make sure he's off the floor enough to not get confused. They got six, looked like they had six guys on the floor for a second. Quickly, Freyer. Oh, Oscar Freyer! Talk about breaking it up. <laughs> They've been hopping behind that arc. Oscar Freyer's been quiet offensively tonight, but Boyd delivered a big bucket there. Tolson 
Down low underneath. And the bucket for the Wolverines. Andrew Bastion in the game with the bucket. Oh, yeah, Bastion, I, we haven't seen much of him tonight. This Utah Valley University team's got 13 new faces that didn't play last year for him. One in the red, put back Kerwin Smith off the miss from VPAD. Kerwin Smith. I think this guy's got the taste of being a starter in this on this team and wants to continue to keep earning those minutes on the floor. Kerwin with 10 points and seven boards. Kerwin Smith adding that muscle over the offseason during his red shirt year has definitely paid big dividends for him because he's got, I think, the confidence to bang down low underneath on the glass and constantly goes to the basket. How about Dwayne Russell? Uh, he wanted a little bit of that three-point land that Josh Braun was striving from in the opening half, and he's chipped in here big time in the second half. Yeah, I just like the way Dwayne Russell just goes about his business. He does whatever Coach Marley needs him to do, and in the first half, couldn't really find his shot. Got Braun going, wanted his partner in crime, his dynamic, other half the dynamic duo out there with him. And then in the second half, he says, okay, it's time for me to call my number and go inside amongst the trees, freeze the bigs, back them up with a little dribble there, and then pull back and snap off a couple threes of my own. So. Very smart basketball player, very unselfish basketball player. Knows that he can get his whenever he wants to. It's about making the other players on the floor better. 66-55, the score with 7-11 to go. This is a much improved conference. A much improved Utah Valley team that finished 12-18 and a year ago overall, 6-8 in the conference. We mentioned a lot of newcomers. Through Thursday, here are the standings. As conference play just underway, and quickly, New Mexico State with a victory today, off to a quick 2-0 start. Coach Weir taking over for Marvin Menzies and doing a great job. Doing a really nice job, and I tell you, it's interesting that New Mexico State, if you were looking at the top scores in the conference, they don't even have a player listed on there. They got about four or five guys that go with. Average and double figures, and at any given night, somebody steps up and provides the offense, but they play together as a team. Very, very fun to watch. Off to a 15 and 2 overall start. Best record off the start for Coach Weir at New Mexico State. First year coach in the entire country. I believe I read that the team was going to stay over in Chicago and go to the uh, Bulls game as the uh, Raptors were in town to see Pascal Siakam. Uh, nice roll, roll running mate. That game's in overtime right now, as a matter of fact. Approaching seven after the Hammocks let the Wolverines know that that shot attempt was an air ball. Braun. Throws up the three. Oh, howdy, come on, come on. I think he was just hoping for the foul. He's even got a smile and chuckle about that one and wanted to try to draw the foul, but actually got the ball to go too. 7 of 12 from the arc is Josh Braun. Good grief. I think that looks like Coach Pope. He, he, he's got his hands on his on his hip. He, he can't even believe what he just witnessed right there. The Lopes are just throwing in threes from all over the place at this North Basket. We got Frere's hit a three, Bronze hit a couple threes, Russell's hit a couple threes, Martin's hit a three in that one there. That's just a circus shot. Look at him laughing as he back pedals down the floor. The kid's having a good time. Good to see him back out there. You know that's where he loves to be. 29 points, you see it right there. We mentioned earlier off the top. In two games last year, he averaged 32 points against Utah Valley. A new season high this year. Old season high 25. And that three there, just you know, give him, give him 29. And he's done about 10 to 17 shooting. It's not like the, he's taking, you know, 25 points, uh, 25 shots to get 29 points. Play with a guy who used to do that all the time. 30 shots to get 30 points. That ain't no good. Are you going to name any names? Or? Nah, I'll no. we'll let it go. It's 2017. It's time for me to start letting that go. You should. Let it go. Hold on to that for about 20 years. <laughs> it's not good for me. David Boyd to his left. Tulson inside. Oh, up and over the top. Oh, Josh 
want him to kick her. Well, he just got back on the floor, young man. Nice job that time by Nelson underneath, utilizing the pump fake, getting that basketball, puts a pump fake on Josh Braun, trying to saddle up. Nelson could at least have held on to him, so he didn't hit the floor, make sure he didn't bang that knee. Hope he's okay. Seems to have control of this game, but 6.19 to play. This is going to be an important two, three-minute stretch right here. Up by 12 points. Can they hold on to that double-digit lead? Raw with a season high, seven three-pointers. Russell had six against Pine Block. Nice feed to Keontae Vernon. Really nice. Kind of a pick-to-picker play. Vernon rolling right down the middle of the floor, and Russell delivered a strike. Poitras long distance. Fifi Adu off the tip from Keontae Vernon. Under six to go. Russell between his legs. Braun. He just five hold a pass to Braun at the three point line. Torson driving. Oh, Fifi Adu climbed the world ladder. Oh, look out. Front, oh. We're down there by where Tim Kimpton's sitting tonight, chasing after that basketball. Look at this one, one more time. Now, adu has got one of these longer wingspans leading guards in the Western Athletic Conference. He just says, no, you shall not pass. And then a mad scramble for the basketball. Almost in there. There's the big redhead there. Sun's radio broadcaster. Half of that dynamic duel with you don't want to run Al into McCoy. Him. No, you don't want to run into Kimpton. Kimpton's oh. going about 3.30 these days. Oh. He's solid. You think he wanted to hear that? I could have left out the weight, I guess. Yeah, I, I could have just said he's solid. He's, he's my guy, solid. though. He's my guy. He's my old Porco buddy. We used to play poker on the planes. I used to give him bad beats. It's like, you got no business beat in that hand, Williams. He'd get all upset with me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, right. he can take a joke. Russell to his right. In the corner, Freyer. He's going to want some of the action. Oh, Coach Barnett loves that. Coach Barnett. That little Thunder Dan came out of him there. That was a big basket right there. GCU in control of this basketball game with just 523 to play. 12 threes for the Lopes. Look out, Fifi. Tulson trying to pick your pocket. Russell, no look. Oh, got a little too fancy. Yeah, Coach Marley said, hey, that was a perfect opportunity. We didn't have the initial break. You brought it back out. Could have milked the little clock. Could have got that thing down under four minutes to play before they had to to be under five minutes to play before they had to shoot that one. And never... Oh, Tolson picked off underneath by Braun. Only two turnovers in the second half by GCU. Was he picked off or was he trying to throw it to Braun? It looked like it it was a, he was the only was one around pass. the pass. Fifi, three, two heavy. Freyer, Braun's in the corner. He picks it up, fresh 30 on the shot clock. Now, yeah, Freyer won't get credit for that offensive rebound, but he's the one that kept it alive. Braun will get the credit, but... Nice job by Frere getting on that offensive glass. Now we got an offensive foul down here. Coach Marley can't believe it. Vernon called. That's five for Vernon. Marley can't quite understand the call. Can't you burn it? Five points, five fouls. Got six boards. These guys just well, he got down the here. There. What do you? Well, see, you know what? It's 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 never Come the on. first one that gets caught. Now, Conte and Vernon with four personal fouls. Got to be a little smarter than that. I want to see that he was that Nelson or Nielsen. One of them just baited him into a call. It's always the second guy that gets caught. You got to wait a trip or two down the floor. He can catch him with a sneaky bow. <laughs> Rib cage, small of the back, you get back at him. Because he already his attention, oh, right? Exactly. He caught his attention. He's just waiting on him. Brando, pulling back, off the mark, bouncing all over the place. Going to belong to GCU as Nielsen went off of him. You got to pick your spots is what you're saying. Absolutely. I'm trying to do the math here. Now, the Lopes have a they got a 17-point advantage in this game. Just under four and a half to play. they got to be real smart right now. You know, they're, they're, they, Utah Valley is in the bonus. Don't forget any fouls where put them on the line with, and have a chance to score with the, oh, with the clock stop. Did you stopped. see that? Oscar yeah. Freyer Oscar picked Fre the pocket of Nielsen. Yeah, but the shot clock did not reset. No, There's only 10 to shoot. Beefy, just inside the arc. And he hits it. Moved in about three or four feet. That's where his range was on that shot. Well, now you're, shot, you're starting to see 
the development of that young fella. Before he would have just shot the long ball. Now he realizes, let me just take up the stagger the defense has given me and make the shot easier. Long ball underneath, muscling his way in and drawing the foul on Clark is Nielsen. I like this kid. I like the way this kid uses his size. He's, he's going to be fun to watch. So Clark called for the foul. Vernon's already out with five. The Lopes lead it 76-59 over Utah Valley. Lead it right here, 3.47 to go. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Grand Canyon men's basketball is brought to you in part by Canyon State Credit Union. Committed to you. Let's send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, guys. Well, the Lopes looking good in their whack opener right now with the 76-59 lead right now with under four to go. And here's how it's shaping up around the conference. New Mexico State still hot tonight. They go to 2-0 in conference action with the victory 77-64 over UMKC. And New Mexico State, rather, over Chicago State. And the Lady Lopes getting the W tonight. They were up in action at Utah Valley. They came out with the victory 62-46 UMKC with the win tonight that final four grand canyon looking good if both grand canyon teams can sweep utah valley meanwhile bakersfield has the lead right now over seattle U. congrats to trent may and the gcu women's basketball team 16 point lead here both teams have gone in on scoring Streaks, Russell. Looks to get it back to Braun. Leaves for Flair. Now to Braun. Nine on the shot clock. Braun's going to have to go. Looking to go to his right. Driving. Putting his head down. High off the glass. Doesn't drop. Randolph to his right. Poitras looks for three. Too heavy. Rebound. Pulled down by Clark. Oh, just beyond the fingertips of Martin. Nielsen leaves there for Poitras. Poitras to his left. In the corner it goes for Randolph. He's going to pull down and make a run doesn't go martin is there for the rebound all called on the wolverines randolph called randolph got a little three happy too quickly that time you didn't want to get a three you're down 16 points and the game clock is slipping away from you you want to make sure that you get your feet a chance to get your feet set your shoulders square to the basket you're trying to do that when you're going 100 miles per hour. It's a very difficult shot to make. Russell with 19 points, 11 assists. Braun, 29 points, 5 boards. Kerwin Smith, 10 points, 7 rebounds. Randolph brings it up, leaves for Ogby, who is hot in the first half. Ogby leaves it there. Open look for Nielsen, and he hits. The three. Yeah, don't don't forget that big man can step from behind that arc. He shoots 44% from behind behind the arc. Doesn't take a whole lot of it, but when you give him an opportunity to get a clean look, he'll knock him down. So that is in the playbook the remaining of this game. 6-0 run for Utah Valley. Poydras is called away from the ball. That's the eighth. Team foul. So once again, they're going back to the line for one-on-one. -on -one. Josh Braun generally is a guy that you would not want to put on the free throw line. 
led the whack at free throw percentage a year ago, but we'll see how he does in his first action back. He hasn't been super stellar tonight. He's missed a couple from the line tonight. Gets that first half of that one and wanted to go down. 30 points for Josh Braun, three straight games against the Wolverines. Josh Braun has hit the 30-point mark. Four of eight from the free throw line in this contest. You know that uh, will climb as we continue to notch more games here at the Western Athletic Conference. Josh's career high is 34 against Utah Valley. Kick back out underneath. Here's Nielsen. That was a nice play. Was that Randolph that did that little wraparound pass around the defender, finds Big Nielsen, step behind the yard, knocks down a three, and then gets a dunk on the next play. Not a lot of bigs can say they can do that. He's got a nice skill set. Russell. Nice catch with Martin. Martin has some room. Almost loses the ball, gets it to Braun. Braun moves to his right, lays it up, doesn't go. I fall hung on the rim for what seemed like five seconds before sliding off. Tolson leaves there for Ogby. Ogby makes his way in. They're going to just back off a little bit. Um, what? Ooh, Russell. Ogby got smacked upside the face as he went to the basket. They're going to get Russell right there, reaching down with the rake across the bridge of the nose. Ogden's a tough little player. He kid goes to the ball to the little hole fearlessly. Gets a three-point play to go. 11-point game here. I think the Wolverines think if they can get a stop here, who knows what might happen. I'd be with 20, 13 in the first half, seven here in the second. Russell to Martin. Freyer. Martin to his right. Russell. Driving baseline, bounce pass, Kerwin Smith trying to get it off. Loose ball, Freyer. Josh Braun pulls down, swarm. Freyer's got an open look. Three point layup. Rebound. Tap back by Kerwin Smith. Oh, that might be the final nail in the coffin. Nielsen was scrambling. Nobody was able to get Kerwin Smith, but Nielsen got popped in the mouth. He's hurt. He's not, he's walking off the floor. I think his teeth, his tooth might have popped out. He's holding it in his hand. I think that was. He's got that big mouthpiece, and maybe it's more than just a mouthpiece. Maybe it's some dental work there, a bridge possibly. Something came loose, and he wants out of this basketball game. Yeah, he's oh. bleeding. Yeah, he's bleeding pretty badly in the mouth there. I don't know if his new tooth got knocked out of it. Just was knocked loose, but there you can see right at the end of that play, Kerwin Smith caught him with an elbow to the mouth. Coach Pope pretty emphatic with the official. I mean, whatever happened was definitely unintentional, but see Coach Pope giving it to giving it to the officiating crew there that's huddled over there at half court. One more time here, the shot goes up and watch it looks like the left elbow right there just comes out just enough to catch a big fella in a bad way. Ugh. That was an untimely. <laughs> oh, I, I missed it. What happened? <laughs> yeah, it's OK. okay. <laughs> just, uh, he's he's, he's really had a nice bit. job that I double to double double in this basketball game. But yeah, isn't that what a mouthpiece, a mouth guard is designed to do to protect the front grill there from getting knocked down? I don't, you know, I know Pope was pretty emphatic about it. he's trying to rally his team, but I mean, in Kerwin, all he cared about was putting that ball back in the hoop, and he came down, obviously, with that left, and Nielsen was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time. I mean, Kerwin had no idea where that elbow was going to go. I never played with a mouthpiece. I got quite lucky. I, should, I was probably silly that I never did. I didn't use one, but never had a problem getting a two knocked out or even bloody. Uh, very fortunate. But uh, yeah, the kid's got to. Yeah, we had commented about the size of his mouthpiece. I wonder if it's not larger because he's got some some dental work that he's trying to protect. If you just catch it just right, that that will cause some problems. I, I had braces I played 
a lot of my high school year with, a part of my freshman year with, and I would get hit in the mouth. And that would cause some blood, but that would be about it. That was more to the gum line and in my cheeks, inside of my cheeks. The officials did look at the uh, replay at the uh, scores table of this. Of course they did. I don't know what's going on in college basketball. Sometimes they they want to try to find intentional fouls where there really isn't any. But with 49 seconds to go, it's really holding up. Which was a, a good basketball game here, slowing things down. I think we could just play on. Kerwin Smith didn't do anything to warn him getting kicked out of this basketball game or even his award free throws to Utah Valley. I, I just feel bad for Nielsen because I've really have enjoyed watching this young fellow play. Definitely going to be a force in the whack is Isaac Nielsen and this Wolverines team is Mark Pope in just his second season is making his presence known in this conference. Now, I don't know if Coach Pope got a good get look good look at this play or if he's just assuming they kid took an, uh, an intentional elbow, but it was it certainly happened unintentionally after the after the putback, so you get caught looking up at that basket. Sometimes you get, you're gonna get you're gonna get hurt. And just an unfortunate play. Well, you see a lot of backcourt pressure here by the Wolverines, as they know they 12 sec 12 down 12 with just 48 seconds to play. They got to try to get a turnover. Oh, Braun loses the handle. Oh, he took a bad ball. Randall's underneath. Well, they let Braun just beat up that time and didn't call the whistle. Didn't blow the whistle. Russell trying to get through. Foul call. Looks like Randolph's going to be called. They got the ball in the hand of the person they wanted to and Braun, their best free throw shooter. So he can get the whistle. Now he got it to Russell, who's done a good job of the night. He's three of three on the evening from the line. Well, he's looking for his 20th point tonight. Four on Randolph. That'd be something to get Russell with 20 and Braun with 30. And there you go. And he had some other guys. And Coach Barley was looking for some other guys to step up at the, in the second half. I think he certainly got that. You know, Smith has done a good job. And uh, Ferris got knocked down a three. And Martin's knocked down a three. So some other guys coming off that line. Done a nice job that I even do with a little mid-range jumper that I can recall. Utah Valley taking plenty of time in the corner. Boyd Riss pulls down. Come on. Randolph's underneath. Swatted away by Kerwin Smith. Draws the foul, does Kerwin Smith. That would have been the one that Kerwin Smith could have just gone ahead and let him have. Because you're not going to block that shot cleanly because the offensive player is just trying to get to your body. You don't want that clock to stop. It gives, obviously, them a chance to score with the clock stop, and now they can set their press much more effectively than they can after, after a live play. So look for Utah Valley to have four guys in this backcourt trying to create another turnover. Dan Marley show to be seen in its entirety at the conclusion of our broadcast. 24 seconds to go. 10-point lead. Braun driving. Martin back to Braun. Up for Frayer. Russell. Now they will just let it run down as the Lopes are going to win their conference opener at home against Utah Valley by 10 points. Nice job, Ron with 31, Russell with 21, Kerwin Smith with 12 and 9. Lopes win, 82 to 72. As Josh Braun returns from a nine-game absence, the score 31 points in the game, chipped in five rebounds with seven of 13 from the three-point arc. And the Wolves go on to improve to 10 and 6 overall on the season, 8 and 2 on their home court, and more importantly, perhaps 1 and 0 to begin conference play. They did a nice job in that second half after shooting under 40% in the first half, came back to a real high percentage in the second half, 47%. You look at the keys, it never poke a beehive. I think they did a nice job. They ran smart. They ran when they had opportunities, slowed it down when they wanted to uh, in that second half. They got the shots that they wanted, shot a real high percentage, certainly knocked down a lot of threes, seven of 18 
from behind the arc in the second half from the land of three. Did a better job on the on the boards. Didn't win the battle of boards tonight, but the second half did a much better job staying even. And I like that welcome back Carter Josh Braun fit in seamlessly yes. tonight. Uh, did a good job on 10 of 12, 10 of 20 shooting for 31 points, but also Russell was able to get hits tonight. So he did a real good job working himself back out in the whole team concept. I even got a smack on the head from somebody, probably that Jared Martin. He yeah. likes beating me up over here. 37 minutes for Josh Braun in the game. 40 minutes for Russell the entire game. I'm sure he was no doubt happy to see Josh back in as are all Lopes fans. Let's send it over to Kay Longworth. All right, thank you guys. Well, congratulations. The mayor is back in town. We'll get to your play tonight, but first and foremost, physically, how's the man? Uh, feeling good, feeling good. No, praise the Lord for uh, getting me back out here. It's good to be back on the court playing with these guys again. And, um, you know, it's been a little while, and so it's fun to get back out here and play and compete. And a season high, 31 points, 21 of those coming from beyond the arc. What was working for you tonight? I just, uh, you know, made shots. With, uh, I just put it up there and it happened to go in. It was just fun to get out there, compete, get after it, like I said. And, and, you know, it's just fun being with these guys and I have to watch from the sidelines. So I know these past couple weeks have been such a struggle for you to not be suited up with your team. What was the overall energy for the team tonight? You, Darian, back in action and also starting the WAC conference, which I know you guys have had your eye on all season. Right. Well, the WAC conference play is uh, the big thing for us. You know, we want to come out here, compete, start this WAC uh, play on a, a good note. And um, it was good to have some extra bodies and get in and get out. And um, it was fun to compete tonight. And like we said, we just wanted to get this first conference win and we did. All right. Congratulations. Go and celebrate with the team. The mayor is back, and like he said, starting the conference on a high note. Well, with an 82-72 victory, I think the Lopes did just that. No doubt about it. Good to see number two back on the hardwood. 82-72, the final score. We'll be back to quickly wrap things up from GCU Arena. After the Lopes begin conference play, now 1-0. There's a surge of excitement at GCU as the Lopes gear up for greatness. We do not accept defeat. We will not disappoint. We will not quit. We are the intensity brewing in the heart of Phoenix. We are the Lopes rising. Come watch us defend our house against Louisville, San Diego State, and rival New Mexico State. Catch all the family-friendly entertainment. Games will sell out. Get your basketball season tickets today at lopestickets.com. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. GCU offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting-edge next-generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. GCU wins it by 10 over Utah Valley. You look at the final stats. Field goal shooting pretty close. Turnovers, 14 by Utah Valley, 7-2. The steals by the Lopes in favor of them. Russell and Josh Braun and Kerwin Smith, 12 points. Also had nine rebounds, close to a double-double for Kerwin Smith. Yeah, big fella did a good job. He got a taste of that starting lineup, and he likes it. Well, this one obviously nice. You want to win at home, and you knew that Utah Valley was a much improved Utah Valley team in, in Coach Pope's second season. Yeah, they're doing a nice jo job. I love the way that they play both inside and out. They uh, fell in love with that three-point shot. Weren't hitting it, kind of got himself a little bit behind, but they kept having the, the, the fortitude to keep fighting back, and finally it took uh, an effort by Braun and Russell and a couple other guys to finally put them away, but they battled hard tonight. 
Time for our player of the game, and who else but the mayor, Josh Braun. Josh Braun was the man tonight. He had it going from behind that arm with seven three-point shots and a variety of moves inside the paint. Got himself fouled, got himself to the free throw line. And I think when you're the best player in the conference or you're tabbed the best player in the conference and you're coming back from an injury, you have to be aggressive. Uh, and I think he was tonight right from the very beginning. The rest of the team took their cue from him. They didn't shoot a real high percentage early in this basketball game. It was really just all Braun and Russell, but it gave the rest of the team confidence once they got out to a little bit of a lead there. They settled down at the half, and then they really took off. Wow, Wolverines fans have probably seen enough of Josh Braun. Third straight mm. game at 30-plus points. 31 tonight, 7 of 13 from three-point land. That is a season high, 7 makes from the arc. Well, they'll be off on the road for a couple. They've got to be road warriors. They haven't been successful, albeit they did travel to Duke and now to the East Coast, but they've got to find some success in this conference on the road. Yeah, yeah, they do, and, and they must they must play much like they did tonight. I get a little bit better job on the boards, but uh, I like the way they played offensively. They really moved the basketball out all around. They spread out the Wolverines. They got them uh, off balance at times. were able to knock down open looks from behind the arc, but there also was opportunities for pick and rolls to the basket. All right, stick around. The Dan Marley Show will be seen It's in, in its entirety right here on CW6 for the Lopes. It's off to the road as WAC matchups against New Mexico State on January 12th, UTRGV on the 14th. You can listen to Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper on the radio. Be sure to tune in to CW6 on January 17th when GCU hosts San Diego Christian in a non-conference matchup. Kate, catch Kate Longworth on the Lopes pregame show starting at 6.30 on the CW6 online at GCU.tv. We're listening to Fox Sports 9, 10 a.m. with Tom Kuyper and Michael Potter. That'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes beat the Wolverines 82-72. to Please join us again January 17th when GCU hosts San Diego Christian. For Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel. The Dan Marley Show coming up next, but have a wonderful evening.